week ago, a last-second homecoming heartbreak and the loss of a precious antique leaves the Wolverines off to their worst start in 15 years. Michigan's preseason dreams have turned to present-day nightmares. Late-game letdowns have left a proud program without back-to-back -back wins in 05. Penn State is the hottest team this side of the Mississippi. Their grandfatherly leader is on the grand stage again. After losing seasons for the last five years, the Nittany Lions have become the biggest surprise in college football. An afterthought by the preseason experts has turned into a top 10 title contender. Today, they look to continue their meteoric rise. But beware the wounded Wolverine. On an absolutely gorgeous day in Ann Arbor, Michigan, ABC Sports brings you into the big house. Over 111,000 will be on hand as Penn State does bring that unblemished record into Michigan Stadium against the 3-3 three and three Wolverines. And here comes Michigan. In the Big Ten today, some fireworks at Ohio State, some late game magic for the Badgers in Minneapolis. Iowa has beaten, well, is on its way to beating Indiana and Northwestern leading Purdue in the third quarter. So the standings right now look like this. Penn State still alone on top with a perfect record of 6-0 and 3-0 coming into this one. Wisconsin, boy, would they love to have last week back right now, wouldn't they? And Ohio State and Michigan find themselves in different positions. And for Michigan, it's definitely a different position than what they're accustomed to here in Ann Arbor. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. My partner, as always, is Bob Greasy. You know, when you talk about a program that has three combined losses in the last six years, if they lose to Penn State today, Michigan's going to lose three games in one season here at home. Well, when, you, when you've won more games than anybody else in college football, and, and you've won national championships and, and, and Big Ten championships, teams, people seem to focus more on the wins than the losses than they do the wins. They just discard the wins and focus on the losses. Michigan has lost three or more games each of the last six years. There's a lot of focus on Chad Henney, their sophomore quarterback this week, too, around here. It's been tough on him. He needs some help, though, from his wide receiver. There is no doubt about it. Steve uh, Breston and uh, Avant, the other the two wide receivers, both in special teams and on offense, need to help him. But he, he can't do it himself. These guys have got to come around, and the coaches have told us this, this week that Tuesday and Wednesday were the best days of practice of the whole uh, year. Year, So uh, I think this Michigan team is going to be ready to play. Well, they're going to have to do better in the red zone than they've done so far this year. Now Penn State, 6-0. and you know, it seemed like a year ago, Joe Paterno didn't know how to coach anymore. <laughs> well, he started, finally got in some recruits, and now he, his defense is back. And the big thing is 19 starters from that team of last year is, is, is here. This is the year for Penn State. And the, the thing that any championship team or any good team has, especially on the road, you need a good defense. And Paul Puzlesny, the defensive linebacker that... Uh, that uh, Paterno has talked about Shane Conlon reminds him of Puzlesny. This guy can play. The last three weeks, he's been the Big Ten defensive player of the year. Nobody's ever done that before. We'll just see how good Penn State is because now they're on the road, and that's a little bit different situation. Joe Pye, Lloyd Carr, set to square off. We'll talk to Swanee and kick it off when we come back. Back in front of a packed house at Michigan Stadium. Let's join the third member of our team, as always, Lynn Swan. Swanee. Thank you very much, Brad. A lot of attention has been paid to Joe Paterno's new offense for Penn State this year. And a lot of credit has to go to his offensive coordinator, Galen Hall. He has done some phenomenal things for a couple of reasons. One, he's got great football experience. He was a head coach at Florida, took him to their first SEC championship. He coached in the European League of the NFL. He coached at Oklahoma. He coached the Emmitt Smiths of the world. But second, and maybe more important, there's a great comfort level, I believe, that Joe Paterno has with Galen Hall. He was Joe Paterno's quarterback in 60 and 61. He's been at Penn State. He's familiar with the kind of program that Joe Paterno likes to call. What Joe Paterno has done has turned over the reins to this offense and said, Galen, I want you to run it. So he's opened it up. 
Now, there have been assistant coaches and coordinators in the past who have always wanted to open up this offense a little bit more. But Galen Hall is a man who's gotten that opportunity, and right now they're undefeated, looking for another wide-open Saturday afternoon in October, Brad. Yep, he's got the reins, and he'll run with it or pass with it. And it's a perfect day to do both. The wind could be a little bit of a factor before we're done, though. It is gusting at times to 20, but it's 65 degrees. Perfect fall day in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And already in the Big Ten today, as we told you about the scores, Ohio State a big win, and Wisconsin in the late seconds beat Minnesota. 40th year as a head man, 56th year as part of the staff at Penn State, and going for win number 350 today. Lloyd Carr on the other side, closing in on 100 victories. He was hoping this would be the game. Maybe he could get it. But again, it was a last-second loss last week that prevented win number 99 in that heartbreaker to the Minnesota Gophers. Michigan won the toss, and they have deferred. So we'll see Penn State on offense to get things going here in front of a packed house at Michigan Stadium. Brad, these two teams have not played in the last two years just by the work of the schedule. The last time they played was in uh, 2002. And in that game, it was an overtime win for Michigan. 27 to 24, as you see the series history. And as we mentioned, Michigan has won the last six. Penn State came into the Big Ten in 1993, and there was concern or thoughts around the, the Big Ten that maybe Penn State would come in and dominate this conference. Well, they won the conference title in 94, went to the Rose Bowl, and that's the last conference title they've won. Now they're thinking conference title and maybe more than that. But again, they're on the road, and this is Michigan. Michigan's kicking team out there as Ross Ryan will kick it away. Derek Williams waits on the other end. He'll take it five yards deep and take a knee. So pretty smart move by the freshman right there. Two freshmen back there, King and Williams. And Williams says, ah, I think we just better start at the 20. And that means Michael Robinson. And he's been sensational. The offensive captain, senior out of Richmond, Virginia. And the numbers on the season, you can see five rushing touchdowns. So he is a dual threat, obviously. Yeah, he's, had, he's had a lot of starts, 27 starts, but only this would be his 15th start at quarterback for the Nittany Lions. And they start Williams in the backfield, number two. Play action, Robinson goes out, completes it to Smoko, his tight end, who's trying to drag his way to a first down, and he got about nine. As we take a look at our Outback Steakhouse starting lineups, here's a guy that can put away some steaks. Brown, really a good one on the left side. Rush, Antolik, Reed, and Richardson. They've had to shuffle that line throughout the season due to injuries. Tony Hunt normally starts at the tailback spot. Snow's the fullback, Smoko, we just saw catch that one, and Williams and Butler are the wide receivers. Here's Tony Hunt again coming out split as a wide receiver. Williams again as a tailback. And on the motion man, it's King on the way around and got out to the 34-yard line. As we take a look at the defense for the Michigan Wolverines. Woodley had a great game last week despite the loss. Watson back in there as a starter. Massey, the captain, and Branch, the young guy they think a lot of. The linebacking court, Burgess, Harris, Graham. Harris had 18 tackles last week in the game we saw. Paul, Harrison, Adams, and Mason. You got to look at that secondary because there's some changes back there at safety. Due to injury, Harrison and Adams making starts when normally it would have been Engelman back there along with Behringer. First down, and now out of the shotgun is Robinson. Mike has a look, has some room on the left side, and he'll take it, he got the corner. And he's still going down the sideline. We're gonna say he stepped out at about the 42-yard line, so it's gonna be a little bit short of a first down. Let's talk about the game plan, Bob, as we go. Well, Robinson has got to make the plays. He is the catalyst. Of this whole. He's a fifth-year senior. Running and passing, he's the catalyst. Michigan, defensively, you got to pressure the quarterback into making some mistakes. Michigan is best in the conference in turnover margin. Penn State is worst in the conference. Penn State minus one. Michigan plus five on that turnover category. Now on second down and a long one, they go to an eye backfield. 
and it's Tony Hunt, and he's got the first, and he's got a bunch more, and he's still on his feet to the 50-yard line and close to the 49 of Michigan is Tony Hunt, the junior running back out of Alexandria, Virginia. And in talking this week with the Penn State coaches, I mentioned, Bob, that everybody kind of loses Tony Hunt in all this flash and dash they have. <laughs> and I'm sure that's all right with Tony Hunt and the offensive linemen. You know, this, we've done a lot of Penn State games over the years, and this, the, the Swanee did this little opening with Galen Hall, and the first five or six, seven plays he's called have been really magnificent. He put the freshman in the backfield and used him as a decoy. And he's got him in there again, and now they option pitch it to him. And, oh, what a move on the left side. That shows you not only the speed, but the moves of this young freshman, Derek Williams. Galen Hall said he was going to move him around, and he also said they're going to throw the ball deep early. They've done that in every game. Watch this little move on, on Burgess. This kid was a quarterback in high school, but, but when he came out, he was the best quote unquote athlete in the draft they I mean in the uh, in the recruiting they knew they weren't going to play him a quarterback that move on Burgess made him look like more like Burgess Meredith standing there <laughs> first and ten pick up the 12 down inside the 40 of Michigan now they go with a fullback straight up the middle and Lamar Woodley says I've seen that one before and Lamar makes the stop we talk about the balance of Penn State. You want to talk about perfect balance? Yeah. This almost never happens. To the decimal point, they have the same amount of rushing yards as passing yards per game. Yeah, and I thought that was a mistake when I <laughs> first took a look at it earlier in the week. They are fifth in the conference in rushing and eighth in the conference passing. You and I both did our own little calculator work. We thought Jeff Nelson made a mistake yes. at Penn State. No, he he never makes a mistake. No, he didn't make a mistake. Five rushes, five different ball carriers so far. Now it might be Robinson's turn, and he does turn it up. Paid the price for it, got about three. Jamar Adams of safety made the stop. But they're going to have 10 or 12 plays a game for Michael Robinson to just keep it himself, kind of like the Atlanta Falcons do with Michael Vick and Vince Young does at Texas. That was one of them. That was just a, a little option. Other plays that they'll have for him are quarterback draws. They'll just have a little sweep. A lot of different ways to get him the ball. And, and you talk to Jim Herman, the defensive quarterback for Michigan, they said they have two tailbacks in that offense. Yep. One of them is a quarterback slash tailback. And Robinson is put together. They list him at 218. He looks more like 230. But he can really run. And this time he passes over the middle down near the 30 to Derrick Williams. And it's going to bring up uh, third down and about three. Two is hit by 22, Jamar Adams. I uh, beg your pardon, fourth down. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit short. 30-yard line. It's fourth down, a little over a yard. And they're going to bring out the field goal unit. And Kelly will hold number 23. We talk about we talk about all the freshman wide receivers. Kelly is a true freshman also and has done very well. Nine of 11 field goals. This would be about what? 47 yards. Seven. That would match his longest of the year. Jason Gannon to hold, and now Penn State's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with them with 11 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. First quarter, Penn straight, trying to go on the board first. We'll see if they hit the field goal when we come back. Penn State still huddled around the coaches on the sideline. We'll wait and see if they've changed their mind on whether or not try this field goal. The wind is gusting and swirling. And with that in mind, here comes the offense. Yeah. So the decision made during the timeout to try to pick up the fourth and one. That's the option. Penn State four for four this year on fourth downs. Here's the toss. Tony Hunt behind his fullback. And he got there and backpedaled for about four more. First down, Nittany Lions. So the fourth down, they're perfect on the season on fourth down. You know, I think the reason they took the timeout is the 25-second clock was coming down. They talked about it, looked at the win, and then decided to go for it. Toss it wide. Let your junior running back get out there and see if he can find a crack. He only needs a yard and a half, and he picks up the first down. Down to the 23-yard line. So Penn State keeps the drive alive. This is the 10th play of their opening march. Joe Pye looks on from the Nittany Lion sideline on the first down at the 23. Robinson, three-step drop, pump fake, wanted to go to the end zone. Now Woodley's chasing. He got away from him. And he got it inside the 20. Picked up about four. 
Let's check out about the ACC, Boston College, and Wake. John Saunders in New York, John. Well, it's the funny, a game-changing performance update. Quentin Porter got pulled from the game. He was struggling. In comes Matt Ryan, who throws two touchdown passes in the last minute and 12 seconds as Boston College comes back to beat Wake Forest 35-30. Nominate your Pontiac game-changing performance at ESPN.com. Keyword, Pontiac Brad. All right, John, thanks. Keep us posted on all the scores today. Second down and five out of the shotgun. Inside handoff. Straight ahead down to the 15 is Tony Hunt. Dave Harris defensively for Michigan makes the stop. It's going to bring up a third down and about two. We talked about Penn State's fourth down conversion percentage. They're 45% coming into the game on their third down conversions. And they bring Smoko, the tight end, back in there. And they'll have a big third down here at the Michigan 15-yard line as you look in from the Bloomin' Onion blimp high atop Michigan Stadium. This is normally where they like to keep the ball in Robinson's hands. Derek Williams in that tailback, and a whistle stops play. Michigan. Michigan's going to take a timeout. 9.22 to go first quarter. Last time we saw Penn State come back and pick up a big first down. We'll see if they get another one here in a minute. We're fairly close to Canada, but this is not the CFL. You got seven guys there. There's a corner, safety, it's uh, nine, 10, 11, and then 12, and that is why. Michigan took a timeout. Michigan had the timeout. Jim Herman's got too many guys out there. So now third down at two, Penn State. This is the opening drive of the ball game. If you just join us, and it's taken from the beginning to 9:22 in the first quarter. This is this, that timeout helped Penn State because they could go over to the sideline, look at their plans. What do we really want to run on this situation? They've got Tony Hunt in the backfield. He picked up a first down on a fourth and one. This time they're going to try to throw for it. Nope. Quarterback draw. Michigan read it well. Did they stop him short? It appears so. Alan Branch with the initial penetration, and then Dave Harris and the rest of the guys close the gap. It's going to be another fourth down. Yeah, Branch came around from the outside. It was a quarterback draw all the way. There was a gap there, but Branch got him down. Now Kelly will come out to try a field goal this much closer than what the other one would have been. It'll be about a 32-yarder instead of the 47 he was going to try. And again, Jason Ganter will hold. Kelly, good kicker for a young guy. They'll try to knock this one in to put Penn State in front. A kick on the way, and he missed it. Never had a chance. Well, that's the problem when you go on the road. Freshmen don't play like they do at home. That's why you've got to have seniors and you've got to have a defense that's going to dominate a ball game. We're going to be seeing the defense shortly because Michigan will take over. Ganner, a little high in the cage, but he got it down and got it turned. A little bit of a slip maybe there on the plant foot of Kelly, and he pushed it. So the opening opportunity of the ball game goes awry for the Nittany Lions. We're still scoreless at zero. And now Michigan on its own 20. And it's a screen pass to Hart. Mike Hart got a good block, 25 across the 30. And Michigan's first play gets him 15 yards. Chad Henney. Been a kind of a tough week after the loss to Minnesota. He's got a smile on his face right now as you take a look. His numbers are very comparable to what they were this time a year ago. But he can't do it himself. You see, he's, uh, he was a, a true freshman last year, and I think everybody, Brad, just thought, well, he's going to really have another bang up here yep. this year. Well, he's just playing like a sophomore. He says it's not that easy. You just can't double your stats just because you're a year older. My partner got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about it. As we take a look at our Outback Steakhouse starting lineups, here's some guys that can pack away the Chow, Stenovich, Hedegi, Kraus, Slentz, and Riley. The front wall for Michigan. Mike Hart, the tailback. Thompson's the fullback. Tim Massacoy, the tight end. And Steve Breston and Jason Avant, who we talked about earlier, have got to come to the plate. Breston did last week with a kickoff return for a touchdown. This guy's the bread and butter, though, right here, number 20, Mike Hart. Kenny. Going to throw it to Hart again. Second screen. 
This time, he got it out to the 43-yard line before Penn State can track him down. Dan Connor made the stop defensively for the Nittany Lions. Good front. Ali, Alford, Paxson, and Matthew Rice across the front wall. The linebacking core, Shaw, Connor, and Puzlesny. Puzlesny, 45 tackles in the last three games. Zemitis and Phillips are on the corners. Harrell and Lowry are the safety. Paul Puzlesny, number 31. Watch this guy all day long. Yeah. If you just want to pick somebody out, watch him go sideline to sideline, hitting people. Third down and three. Breston's in motion. And Henny fires it out to him, but he threw it behind him. Breston got turned around. Henny got some pressure from Puzlesny and maybe rushed the throw a little bit, and it's fourth down. Well, he turned to his right, and he got to open up all the way the other way to throw all the way to his left. Michigan started with two screens, and that was good, I think, to get Henny into the flow of the ball game. So now they'll punt. Ross Ryan in the kick. Drops deep to receive for Penn State. Alvin Lowry back deep for the Nittany Lions. Not a big play return threat type guy, at least so far in the year. They got some pressure on Ryan, but he got a pretty nice kick, and Lowry will call fair catch and take it right at the 20-yard line. So Penn State's second drive is going to start where their first one started, at their own 20. Penn State coming into the ball game. Their rankings, total yardage up to doing 36. Bit, doing a little bit better this year, right? Yep, exactly. And 26 in the country in scoring at 33.3 points per ball game, giving up about 15 a game. 6-0, and oh, a far cry from the 4-7 and seven of last year and four losing years in the last five. So they are hungry. They're already bowl eligible. And that alone has got Happy Valley buzzing. Now they're thinking, how big a bowl can we go to? He's out. Ball carried by Tony Hunt. Tony Hunt Allen got Brand. about five. That'll bring up second down at five. Joe Pa, 78 years young. All-time leader in bowl wins, as a matter of fact. 20 victories and 31 appearances in bowl games. Second and five. Play action for Robinson. Wanted it all, had a double pump to get his hands on it, and he threw a rocket that was almost caught by Derek Williams. Looked like the ball was going to slip out of his hand, Bob, and he had to reload. Well, you're right. He double pumped. He got somebody in his face just before he threw it. Williams makes a great effort to catch this football. was Hall, number 29, that maybe thought that he had an interception. Take a look. There's the pump. Galen Hall telling us that they were going to go deep early. And number two, Williams is one of the guys they like to throw the ball deep to. And they're in the third and five here. Michigan shows blitz, and they come with it. Robinson throws short to Hunts. He's going to have to make a lot of guys miss, though, and he can't. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Nice job by the Wolverine defense. Michigan defense is really what's been holding this Michigan team in a bunch of these games. They're, they're ranked 31st in the country in total defense. That's pretty good defense. Got a hand on the face pass. It was not called. And Penn State is set to punt. Jeremy Kapanos in to kick. Steve Breston waits on the other end. Breston has a punt return and a kickoff return for touchdowns this year. So you've got to watch out for him because he's back to being close to 100% health-wise. Nice punt. Way back goes Breston at the 22. Gives a little ground. And he's dropped down. He ran into his own guy. And then Kilmer on the special teams made the tackle. 52-yard punt of beauty. Only a five-yard return. 5.22 remaining in the first quarter. Michigan's got the ball back. Mike Hart will probably touch that football in the next play or two. We'll see when we return. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Hummer. Check out the H2 Hummer like nothing else. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. IBM become an on-demand business. IBM can help. And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. 
There's been a lot of tacos and buns consumed outside the stadium today with a late start here at Michigan Stadium. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan with you in Ann Arbor. No score so far here in the first quarter. Chad Henney changing things up on the play call. Three wide receivers with him. Drops to throw it. He's just going to tuck it away and go himself. And he got up to the 30, close to the 31-yard line. Let's check out Michigan's game plan, Bob. Well, for, uh, for Michigan offensively, Henny, just, just manage the game. Don't try to do too much. You're only a sophomore, not a fifth-year senior. Line. You need some help from your Second rest of your offense. Eight. Defensively, this is a blue-collar defense. They need to lead the way. You're on the road. This Michigan, this uh, Penn State defense will lead the way for the rest of the team. Chad got two, second down and eight. Here's Mike Hart right into the thick of things, and Connor, the linebacker, and makes the stop. Mike and the Hart. Michigan, or rather, the uh, Penn State defense got Dan even better Cooper, since Dan, Dan Connor, Connor became a starter. They knew that he was going to be the impact kind of player, had some off the field issues that had him in Joe Paterno's doghouse. He's been a starter for a couple of games now. And he makes a difference, Ed. And they've gotten better and better and better as, as the year has worn on. This is their seventh ball game, and the defense is getting better every week. Third down and five now for Michigan. Henny, plenty of time this time. Throws a strike. Avant, did he catch it? Nope, couldn't hold it. Nice hit put on by Harrell right at the very end of the play. Or I think Jason would have come down with a first down catch. That was a good throw and a good catch. Good defense. We have two good defenses on the field here today. Penn State plays a lot. Let's see if he caught the ball or was bobbling it. He was bobbling it. Yeah. But Penn State plays a lot of zone coverage. That's why those two screen passes earlier in the ball game. Calvin Lowry waiting on Ryan's punt. Again, pretty good kick, and Lowry will take the fair catch at about the 22, 23 yard line. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Reminder tomorrow night on ESPN. The Texans battle the Seahawks, and on Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern on ABC, John and Al will have the Rams in Indianapolis take on the only undefeated team in the NFL, Peyton Manning and the 5-0 Colts. Speaking of unbeatens, you got to start worrying when somebody's undefeated if you can go all season undefeated, and it's greasy. And the toss down, and who's that, Cephalo? Who could that catch? I think that was... Uh... Uh, I didn't even Howard Twilley. It was Twilley. Twilley. It was Howard Twilley. I don't think the Colts can go perfect. You know, we haven't had to worry too much. Uh, <laughs> a lot of teams are getting beat. We threw a little threw a little one in there on you. But early in the season, so only one team left. Good Normally the 26. Dolphins, uh, you know, we got to go seven, That's eight, right. nine, ten games into the NFL <laughs> year before we start uh, feeling a little bit better. Yeah. Pretty good on that, partner. That was a good throw. Thank you. Champagne's always on ice for that 72 team. You know, I was talking the other day with you about it. Uh, I broadcast Don Shula's 300th NFL win, and yep. should Penn State win today, I'd do Joe Paterno's 350th win. I'm kind of a milestone kind of guy. <laughs> yes, you are. Michigan's got other ideas. Yeah. Uh -huh. Second down and eight. Draw play. Hunt. Nice move in the hole by Tony. He's going to get a first down. Gets stood up big time by Brandon Harrison at the end of the run, but everybody says, you know, Tony Hunt's just not a flashy guy. Well, there's a couple flashy moves in there. He picked up nine yards. Take a look at ground level. Well, he's not the burner that these other young freshmen are. Doesn't have the speed, but he's a lot tougher guy inside to take the punishment that Michigan just gave him right here. You know, Tony is averaging over six yards a carry. That gets lost in all the hoopla about the fantastic four, the wide receivers and guys that play different positions like Derek Williams and Justin King. There's Tony's numbers right now, five and a half a pop, which is pretty impressive. First down at the 34-yard line. Bounced off, one would-be tackler, now he's in trouble, and down he goes. He lost yardage there. A loss of five, slipped down, but the penetration of the Michigan defense, Massey and company, exactly. got to him. That's just good defense at the line of scrimmage, Massey, Watson, and uh, Woodley, and those guys up front. Just penetration, there was no place to go. Wonder how many late night pizzas Massey had this week. <laughs> and we told you last week, if you weren't with us, how he has to eat an extra time every week and every night 
right around midnight has thrown a pizza or something to keep his weight up. Just to keep his weight up. <laughs> oh boy, what a problem. <laughs> nice problem to have. Yeah. Nice play fake by Michael Robinson. Loads and fires long for Williams. And it was almost picked off back there by Leon Hall. Double coverage. Leon Hall with a good play on the ball. Almost came up with the interception. And now Robinson having a chat with the referee about Allen Branch arriving maybe a little bit late. Third down and long coming up for the Nittany Lions. Branch is a load about 315 on a 6'6 frame. Here he comes around the corner. No, no, you can't. Yeah, he's all right. No, he can't Mike talk. tripped over. Actually, Penn State or uh, Michigan, uh, or Penn State rather is lucky. They didn't throw a flag for uh, the offensive line and punching him in the face. Yeah, exactly. Third and long. Robinson has time. Loads and goes for Smoko, and he had him open, but he overshot him. Now, this is not a high percentage passing offense. Mike Robinson is not real accurate. He leads this team, he runs, he passes, he throws, he all does everything, but he is not a high percentage passer. He's only averaging 47% completion percentage against Big Ten opponents, and that's not very good. And he's three out of six right now for only 15 yards. Capano set to kick again. He had a booming punt last time. Preston only got a five-yard return out of it. See how he does this go around. Another dandy. Not as deep. Preston's going to call fair catch and take it at about the 26-yard line. Fair catch at the 26-yard line. So Joe Paterno, whose team came in 6-0. and and at his news conference last week after the big win over Ohio State, he says, you got to put it in the past. Our big problem this week is not to, 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 to say, hey, you know, we beat Ohio State. Yeah, well, Ohio State's gone. It's over. It's over. You know, we, <laughs> you, you play Ohio State and you play Michigan away, that's not exactly uh, a soft spot. So you're, you're in a... You're in a, in a tough situation. <laughs> As only Joe could say it. Oh, yeah. And it could only take Joe that long to say it. 17 to 10, that went over Ohio State on ESPN last Saturday night. It was a dandy. What a scene they had in State College at Beaver Stadium. Pick up of about four there as Tyler Ecker makes the catch. The tight ends from Michigan. That's another thing you and I and Swanee were talking about with Terry Malone yesterday, the offensive coordinator. Got to get them involved. Got to get them back involved. The Michigan has always thrown to the tight ends. And Michigan has had a lot of good tight ends come out of college and go on to the pros. Ecker and uh, uh, Massacoy, two of their top tight ends, didn't catch a pass or maybe one pass all of last week. There's Massacoy in motion. Now sets in the backfield. And the give is to Mike Hart. Mike's finding the sled is his tough against Puzlesny and those guys, the linebacking core. Well carried by number of course, 20, Mike so Hart. many years it was called linebacker U. And you, you look at that game earlier today with the three that Ohio State well, had, Carpenter and Hawk, and those guys. But I'll tell you what, Connor and Puzlesny here at Penn State are almost a match. Yeah, Puzlesny right now is, is I mean, he's a, just a junior, a true junior. So he's going to get a lot better. And Connor right next to him. Uh, has got all the potential in the world. First time ever, offense, defense, special teams, you name it, that somebody's been named Big Ten Player of the Week three times in a row, and that's Puzlesny as the defensive player of the week in the Big Ten three straight seasons. Nice run by Mike Hart there, and Mike's got it out across the 40-yard line, and that's going to give Michigan a first down, and that might be the last play of our first quarter. So we've seesawed back and forth. We saw Penn State with a nice opening march, took it all the way down the field, missed a relatively easy field goal. And now the Wolverines and Nittany Lions have played field position here. Right now, Michigan has the best of that. They're going to bring everybody over to the sideline and talk it over because the first quarter has come to a close. Good, tough-hitting Big Ten game here, and one quarter is already gone. Trying not to lose the third time this season at home. The Nittany Lions trying to go to 7-0. And so far, we're even at zero. Aerial coverage for today's game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship, Bloomin' Onion One. Outback Steakhouse Airship specializes in college football and PGA golf coverage. Look for the Bloomin' Onion One at sporting events throughout the year. 
And we had the Bloomin' Onion with us earlier this season. I don't know, they just parked that baby out at Ann Arbor City Airport, or I guess they went home and came back. Nice day to fly again, though. Perfect. Blue sky is about 65. Chad Henney back to throw. Got it out in the flat. Short gain to Tim Massacoy. And Tim's probably happy he just got a chance to catch one. Penalty marker down in the Michigan backfield. Yeah, he got rid of that cast. Massacoy's had a cast on his hand for the rest, for the past month. Somebody should have had a cast on their hand in the offensive line because yeah. they just got called for holding. Holding. 57 on the offense. 10 yards. Previous spot. Repeat first down. Adam Krause is center. The guilty party. First penalty of the ball game. Right in the center there. 57. Oh, yeah. There it was. He saw Paxson get around the corner as an open man. Penn State had the ball 10 and a half minutes. And got 78 yards, but no points. Dual backfield now as Grady comes in to join Mike Hart. This is a little twist for Michigan we haven't seen much of. Is that and it's Grady who goes out for a pickup of about three. Dan Connor made the tackle. And he's had uh, three completions. Two to the running backs and one to the tight end. The second pass uh, to the tight end, Henney, was called back. I mean, to... Uh, Massacoy from Henny was called off. With, uh, only three completions throwing inside. Preston comes out. Carl Tab comes in as a wide receiver. The tight end shifts over. That's Tyler Ecker. And now the other tight end or the fullback on the move. A lot of shifting going on for Michigan. Henny in trouble. All that shifting and he gets sacked. Jay Alford got him. Penn State plays a lot of zones and rushes only four guys. And the reason they get away with that is because those four guys up front put a lot of pressure on. Them. 55 is Rice, 41 is Paxson. And Alford with the sack. Tom Bradley, the defensive coordinator, his team has 21 sacks now, tops in the Big Ten. And that's more than they had all last year. Yeah. Not, they not only lead the conference in sacks, but also in takeaways. Tied with Michigan at 12. Third down and a mile. Third and 19. And he's going to throw short to Ecker. Tried to get a tight end screen going. And it was broken up. Think it hit Leo Hennigy, the guard on the shoulder pad in route, so it's going to be a punting situation for Michigan. Michigan's had the ball three times, and this will be their third punt. First time that Ross Ryan will punt in this direction. clear everybody out of the way has to let it bounce and it takes a great Michigan roll inside the 10 still going to the five what a kick great job by Michigan's putter as he pins Michael Robinson on the Penn State offense deep in their own territory 64 yard punt so Michael Robinson when he gets his offense out there might be throwing from his own end zone ninth game as head coach at Penn State and it's at Michigan Stadium on the road where his Nittany Lions are trying to remain perfect. They come in 6-0. But they started their own five-yard line after the great punt by the Wolverines. They could get a little noisy down there in that end zone. Tony Hunt is in the end zone. The tailback in the Nittany Lion eye. Williams in motion. And it's Hunt trying to get a little extra breathing room, and he got very little. And the ball, did the ball come out? Big scrambler at the end of the play, pickup of about a yard. The flag on the play, Williams, when he was in motion, was going toward the line of scrimmage. That's going to take it half the distance. They're going to be back about their own two-and-a-half-yard line, if it's the call we think it is. Bill Lee Monier will uh, let us know, our referee today. to see at the end of the play if the ball did come out. The ball is out. Definitely out. So the scramble wasn't for nothing. 
Burgess knocked it out of there from Tony Hunt, number six. There's Prescott coming in and getting a hand on it. And the ball is down and out. Just bounced up to uh, one of the Penn State players. Wow. Lucky break. Branch was right there, just couldn't get down to it. Illegal motion, number two on the offense. Moving forward at the snap. Penalties decline, second down. So they'll decline the penalty and take the down instead. I'm not sure I'd have done that. I'd have taken the penalty. Why not have him at the two and a half yard line so any kind of miscommunication in the backfield could end up being inside inside the seven yard line tonight. Good enough. That's good enough. Oh, yeah, that's good enough. Inside the ten is good enough. Hey! Hey! Rydell Sargent, another wide receiver, a freshman down to the bottom of your screen for Penn State. Finally getting a little noisy here in the big house. Trying as best they can. Here's a give to Tony Hunt again. And Hunt bounces outside and almost got a first down. Woodley's holding on. And Grant Mason came up to help. Going to be a third down and short after we check in with John in New York. Well, Brad, it's the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT and Vince Young in Texas already with a 7-0 lead. And the Young does it with his feet. Just puts it across the line. 14 to nothing. Texas looking to go to 6-0. Meanwhile, USC has touchdowns from Reggie Bush and Lendale White. And they lead Notre Dame 14-7. Funny how big-time playmakers yep. make big-time plays as, every week. As advertised. Yeah. Huh? Tony Hunt got up very slowly after that last carry, and he's going off to the Penn State sideline. Austin Scott will come in to take the running back spot if it's not Derek Williams. Uh, he walked off well, under his own power, but he walked very slowly. They're going to have Williams in the backfield and Austin Scott out as a wide receiver. Might be Michael Robinson's turn here. First down, Robinson out to the 20 yard line. Well, that's the threat you get right there, having that second tailback back there, only this one happens to be your quarterback. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Brad, you know, we've talked about Michigan coming back from adversity three and three in the season, but Mike Gellison is their strength coach. And in the locker room, he has that saying on the wall, that's Latin. And it is hook when that they pull airy ut weary citus. And for all of those out there who understand Latin, I hope I did it right. <laughs> but it means come hither, boys, and become men. And there's nothing that will make you grow up faster and become stronger than a little adversity. Boy, and they had some after the loss to Minnesota last week, didn't they? Robinson, plenty of time. Aaron it long for Williams. Overshot everybody, including Leon Hall, who was closer to the ball than Williams was. Yeah, Williams was running a little out and up. And uh, Hall said, you ain't giving none of that stuff. I've been expecting you to throw deep. And he had that covered like a blanket. Now, that was Hall on one corner. We talked to Grant Mason this week, too. As you see Hall in the coverage on Williams. A little out. Didn't bite on it. But Grant Mason was telling us, you know, what you got to do on some of these young wide receivers for Penn State is don't give them a free pass every time they want to run. Yeah. Got to get up there and jam them. Got to hit them a little bit. Get physical with them. See, the corners are playing off the receivers. Second down at 10. Robinson, quick throw. This is Jordan Norwood, another one of the freshmen, and one of the fantastic four, if you will, has got a first down to pick up a 14. And which, when we say freshmen, we mean true freshmen. Yep. Derek Williams, Justin King, Norwood are all three true freshmen and, and they, wide receiver for Penn State. And they had Lydell Sargent out there earlier. That would have been the, the, the fifth guy. Deion Butler is a redshirt uh, freshman. You see Norwood and Williams trot out together to the left. There's Butler. They haven't gone to him yet. He's to the right. First down, Penn State. Throw is out to Williams. Uh, make it Norwood again. Thank you, pardon. And Jordan Norwood, he is second reception here on this drive. We talked about the Young Lions. As I said, the Fantastic Four, if you will, Williams and Butler and King and Norwood. And look at the numbers, because coming in, those four guys had 55 catches, over 1,300 total yards. Is Joe Paterno still coaching this <laughs> team? Swanee <laughs> says it's an alien that it's looks an, like Joe. It's an alien yeah. that's coaching. <laughs> 
43% of their offense, 40% of their touchdowns. Robinson looking for a receiver. Now trying to find a place to land, and it's very close. It looks like it's a first down. Harris and Massey caught up with him. Had to get out to the 43, and he's right on the yellow line. Now, now Brad, just, just to throw this in there, since you brought up the Fantastic Four, if you had to give names, I guess Williams would be considered the human torch because he's so fast. <laughs> That's right. I won't venture to guess at who would be the thing or, um, you know, Mr. Fantastic, the stretch guy, yeah. or, or neither one of them would qualify as the invisible woman. That's true. <laughs> And none of them are big enough to be the thing. You're right. They're all kind of <laughs> small guys, around 180 pounds. There's not much to any of them, but they are lightning quick. They're going to measure this one. I thought he got it, but we'll wait and see. Nope, not quite. A few chain links shy. This drive started, remember, at their own five-yard line. The eighth play of the drive coming up. 20, 22 freshmen have played this year for Joe Paw. That's including redshirt freshmen, but seven of them have been true freshmen. Remember the time when you had to be around four or five years yeah. before you hit the field at Penn State? Yeah, maybe maybe a fifth-year senior to make the kickoff that's, team. That's no more, and Joe <laughs> realizes that he's got a lot of fourth- and fifth-year seniors that are leading this ball club, but a lot of the big play guys are true freshmen. Only flags down. 50 offense, five-yard penalty. Richardson, the right tackle, is a new guy out there, and in a crucial situation, third and inches, it's going to be third and five and inches now. Third and inches is a heck of a lot more makeable than third and five and a half inches. Five yards and an inch and some inches. Michael Robinson has a look at the wristband, and now the play obviously will not be the same one as we were going to see before. Robinson will work out of the shotgun. They'll spread four guys out as wide receivers. Throws out. Williams catches it on the run, and he might be gone. Down the sideline. Stepped out of bounds. But you could see the speed there. Now where will they mark him out? I think way back at about the 37, but it's still a first down and a big play. This is just a safe throw on third and five. Shotgun spread out. Michigan defense gets them blocked out there. This guy does not play. He steps out of bounds yep. right there. This guy does not play like a true freshman. And he plays with just such reckless abandon. I mean, he gets going. He had a head of steam. That was a perfect pass, Bob. It caught him right in full stride, and he already had a full head of steam. Exactly. Here's where he steps out right there. 25-yard pickup. First down, Penn State. Now the toss to Austin Scott. And Scott only got a couple and got hammered down by Morgan Trent and Prescott Burgess. But, you know, you go on the road. I mean, going on the road is not like playing at home. You go on the road, and you... Freshmen are supposed to be intimidated when they go on the road. You know, you can never trust them right. and, and all this other stuff. They're going to drop the ball. But but Derek Williams, just just in, in Northwestern, Penn State's only played one road game this year. They've had five home games and one road game. And in Northwestern, he caught the winning touchdown pass late in the ball game. Five runs and four passes on this drive. Here comes pass number five, and it's complete again. This one's to Deion Butler, short of the first down. But he got it down inside the 30 of Michigan. You know, the four guys, the young guys, and we've talked about them a lot, they lived together over the summer, Williams, King, Butler, and Norwood. They all roomed together all summer. And they said, you know what? People say, can they do it? The way we think is we can't wait to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's great thinking, too. I mean, everybody else says, you know, they question them, and they say, hey, bring it on. Yeah. We can't wait to get it Let's done. Let's go play. Yeah. It's not whether or not we can do it. It's when we can do it. Third down and two. Williams in the backfield. Option. Robinson waits and maybe waited too long to make his decision. He's going to be short by about a yard. And now it's time to think this one over a little bit, too, because this is almost Neverland. When you got a young kicker and he's already missed one. Bob and Brad, I think this is a moment while Penn State's trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. And we can highlight the importance of special teams. While Michigan has not been able to move the ball down the field very well, their punter has penned the potent Penn State offense 
deep in its own territory until they get up and make a mistake and can't convert a first down. No doubt. Now they find themselves trying to kick for three points as opposed to being in the red zone trying to score a touchdown. All right, well, we're going to see Kelly. He missed earlier from 32. This will be a 45-yard field goal attempt for the left footer. The kick on the way, and he missed another one. And now you start to think, why didn't we maybe go on fourth and one? But Joe says, let's go for three. Didn't get it. He might get another chance later. And his head coach is the first guy that met him over there on the sideline. Still scoreless in Ann Arbor. Good game, but no points. 7-12 remaining first half. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac. Go online to nominate your Pontiac game-changing performance. Aflac, ask about it at work. Stanley Tools, make something great. And Anheuser-Busch, smooth and refreshing Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Always great times outside the big house and inside the big house. Michigan Stadium, Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew watching Penn State on the road. Miss a couple of field goals here, and we're still scoreless. 7-12 to go in the half. Rick, the uh, throws quick out to Lamont from Chad Henney. Zemitis made the tackle out there. Avant, the favorite receiver of Chad Henney, and Chad admitted to us, you know, that you, you don't lose a guy like Braylon Edwards, as he did, to being a number one draft choice in the NFL, and not have it be in your mind a little bit, Chad. So I'm not going to kid you. I'd love to have him yeah. out there. And they, one of the things they have not done well this year is succeed inside the uh, red zone, inside the 20-yard line. They have not done well. Where last year, a lot of the time, they just throw it up high for Braylon Edwards, and he go up and catch it. Henny now is out as a wide receiver. And here comes Antonio Bass. And there goes Antonio Bass. A little trickery for Michigan, and they pick up a big game. And that's one of their young guns, Antonio yes. Bass, a freshman as well. And Bass was a quarterback in high school, so they move Penny out to wide receiver, and Bass gets a direct snap. The guards pull. That's Hennigy, number 65, pulling. And the rest is just pure speed. Everybody cracks back to the inside, seals off the Penn State defense. Lowry misses a tackle, and Harrell gets him. This will be the first play for Michigan in Penn State territory at the 44-yard line after a pickup of 23. Penn State's linebacker showing blitz here. They'll bring it. Penny in the pocket, steps up and fires. Got a man open. It's a bump. Inside the 25, and a nice throw by Chad Henney. And there's his favorite receiver, the guy we were just talking about. Pick up a 21. Well, what makes this play is the offensive line and backs picking up the blitz. He's got plenty of time and a great view. Stepped up in the pocket. Nice pitch and catch there. But Perfectly credit, thrown. Credit that offensive line. Exactly. Chad's like, that's more like it. That's building the confidence. Now they've got it down to the 23-yard line. Not quite officially the red zone yet, but here's where their trouble sometimes begins. Sprint draw, Hartz, and picked up a couple. Chris Harrell made the stop. You know, we were talking to uh, Chad Henney yesterday, and... Uh, Grew up in Pennsylvania, and he told us it came down to Penn, to Penn State uh, or, to, or to Michigan. And he said uh, to Joe, he didn't feel like Joe and Pa and the uh, Penn State guys were that interested in him. From the look on his face, you can tell he's got a lot of friends, buddies from high school that went to Penn State. And he said, they'll be calling me if we don't win this game, trust me. <laughs> and he's from Wild Missing, Pennsylvania, which is near Reading. And here comes Chad out as a wide receiver again. That puts Antonio Bass in the backfield with a quarterback draw. And he didn't get much either. Carrying the ball is Antonio Bass. Two or three. It's still going to bring up a third down and at least five. Bob and Brad, that was working out in the Michigan weight room the other day on Thursday, and Bass came through. And some of the guys were teasing him, saying, you know, they talk about fantastic freshmen, but they always seem to talk about Penn State fantastic freshmen. <laughs> we don't have any of those at Michigan. They were kidding him, as he was saying. And he just laughed and nodded and kept going because he knew he was probably a part of this game plan this afternoon. He's maybe the biggest receiver as far as true freshmen, 6'2", 191 pounder. Justin King, another freshman who plays both ways for Penn State, playing corner right now 
on a third down and five. Avant in motion. Henny looked at Avant. Now comes back the other way and overshot Reston by a mile. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, he just threw it away. He had plenty of time, and nobody got open, so he did the right thing. So that'll bring out a guy that had some struggles last week. He's had high moments, so went over Michigan State with a game-winning overtime kick. A heartbreak of missing one against Minnesota, missing two against Minnesota that might have made a difference last week in the setback to the Gophers, and that's Garrett Rivas. He'll come in to try to break our scoreless tie. 35-yard field goal attempt. And a kick on the way, and he's got this one. Right down State Street. Garrett Rivas. First three of the ball game, and it comes with 4.34 remaining in the half. And he's probably saying, that's a long way to kick that one. <laughs> three nothing, Michigan at home. I almost wore that same hat today. <laughs> <laughs> 3-0 Michigan, uh, Garrett Rivas' field goal of 35 yards, and now the kick is high and short. Going to have to hurry just to make a catch. Williams does at about the 20, and he can only spin out for a couple more. Time now for this week's uh, Aflac trivia question. And here it is. Although it's known as the pigskin, a football is made of leather. How many footballs can be made from the hide of an average-sized cow? Oh, I hope that's not Bebo out there. <laughs> All right, we'll think that one over. <laughs> if we were doing a Texas game, it would be a yeah. better chance of it, right? Yeah, that's right. It's not a pig skin. It's actually cow skin, but we'll, uh, we'll have the answer for you here in a couple minutes. Tony Hunt is back in for Penn State. He was shaken up on an earlier drive. He's in there at tailback. Michigan might come with a blitz. Robinson runs right into Mr. Massey. And still got rid of it and got a man, and it's Kilmer for a first down. Only Mike Robinson can make that play. I mean, that was just outstanding. Most quarterbacks would have been would have been gotten eaten up by Massey. He not only stops him, gets around him, but completes the pass. Throws it back in the side. Smoko 81 was not the receiver. He just that's a heck of a play by the quarterback. Ethan Kilmer, senior, making the catch right there. And a first down. Picked up about 13. Six different receivers now. Mike Robinson has used and He's hit his last five passes. He's 8 of 12. Kind of warming up with his arm. He's still warm. Norwood again yeah. complete. See there? They got a rhythm going right yeah, now. When that ball was a little bit behind him, if it would have been a, in, up a little bit and in front of him, he could have run for a long way. But you can, you don't have a, a guy as big as Mike Robinson that can run over people and run options and still throw the, throw the ball perfectly every time. I this think the flag is for trying to, uh, it looked like they were saying assist the runner, but I don't know what that has to do with the wide receiver. Maybe it's a warning to the sideline. And no penalty. This is the ninth offensive possession, all of which have started within the, the offense's 30-yard line. So every team has had to take the ball and move it down the field. Do you try a home run ball right here from midfield? Mike yeah. Robinson loves to throw long on the left side. That's where Williams is with Norwood right now. Well, we'll never find out. It looked like they were going to try to throw a screen out uh -huh. there. Uh-huh. Penalty marker down. Ball start, 67, offense, five yards, first down. Big Levi, Levi Brown, a guy that will be a player in the National Football League someday. Every time there's a, every time there's a penalty called on an offensive line, I just say it's not fair. Because <laughs> they don't get their name called. Well, we do call their we name. We do try to give them a little love. For, yeah. for some good blocks and some, you're right. Mostly, though, it's good, bad things. Williams will be in motion. Robinson on first and 15. Fires out to him. Boy, he made a tough catch. <laughs> Got back to the original line of scrimmage. That baby had some Zuzu on it, and he caught it over there on the sideline and was still thinking about running with it. Watch how quick this throw gets out. So he looks downfield, and he's got somebody in his face. So he says, I got to get rid of this thing and quick. 
He and Alan Branch have had an ongoing thing back there in the backfield, haven't they? They have. Wow. So only about a five and a half yard pickup to number two, but he did make a heck of a catch his third of the day. Now four wide outs for Robinson on second down and nine. Corner blitz may be coming from Michigan. Here it comes. And Robinson, there he goes. Fumble! Michigan's got it. The freshman safety, Brandon Harrison, on the fumble recovery. Dave Harris, I think, is the guy that made the hit right there. This is the first fumble. Harris pulls it out. This is the first fumble in the last three games for Penn State. They had no turnovers the last two games. Twelve quarters without one, and then there it goes. Yeah, that ball is definitely out before his knee is on the ground. Just when the Nittany Lions had something going on offense, the turnover gives it right back to Michigan. And Joe Paterno is going to take a timeout. He let the official on the sideline know without any question that he wanted one. And that's one Penn State timeout remaining. Michigan with the lead and the football. And 2.31 remaining in the second quarter. Joe Paterno took that time out so the officials could take the play under review. under review. And now as they come over to the sideline, they'll be talking with the technical advisor up here to our left. Jim Keogh is our uh, replay official, if you will, today. And Joe Paterno took the time out because he wanted them to take a look at Michael Robinson, whether or not his knee or any part of him was down before that ball came out on that last run. The fumble was forced by Dave Harris and recovered. At least uh, that's the way it is right now yeah. by Brandon Harrison. And, and they knew they knew they were going to review it. I wonder why the referee waited till we came back from commercial to make the announcement. Why didn't he go over during the commercial and look at it? Because his dinner reservation is not till 830, I guess. I don't know. Well, here's, here's one look. Well, he can't call for it, guys. I think the... The replay officials have to let them let him know yeah, but he called, that it's under review. We'll call for it during the commercial. Oh, the, review. the play stands was called. Fumble recovery, Michigan. First down. Michigan keeps the football on the fumble recovery. Penn State talked about turnovers and that they hadn't had any they were worse for 12 than, quarters. Yeah, they were last in the nation through the first four games. And they're still last in the Big Ten Conference. And that was, I'm saying, the game plan going in was Penn State needed not to make turnovers, yep. and Michigan, Michigan needed to get some. And they got one, and now they've got the ball and the lead at the 39-yard line. They have 231 to play with and two timeouts left. Massive call, the tight end in motion. And a quick throw is hit by Matthew Rice and knocked off course. Rice. Defensive and the senior out of Baltimore got a hand in the way. Two defensive ends and with the bottom of your screen, number 55. That's just good play. Good play and good coaching. Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach, teaching his linemen to, to get as much as you can. And if it's a quick pass, get your hands up. If you can't get there, get in the way. Second and ten. Henny looking left all the way. High pass, Avant. Nice catch, though. And it'll be very close to a first down. Don't forget, John and Craig and Aaron will have the Capital One halftime show for you here in a couple of minutes with highlights and analysis from games that have already occurred and what's going on right now. Some crazy finishes in the Big Ten today. Third down and short. Mike Hart looks like he's got the first down right at the midfield strike. Well, Avant keeps catching balls, but we talked about Steve Breston having an impact on special teams and catching a couple passes last week. He has not been a factor yet. There he is out to the right-hand side. I got it. And now the official is going to take a timeout. So they might bring the chains out to look at this. The ball is marked just short of midfield. And they're going to bring the sticks to make sure. Minute 58 remaining in the half. And 
And got the first down by a bunch. Here's the first down. First down, Michigan. They asked the Aflac trivia question earlier. Even though it's not a pigskin, it's made from cowhide. How many footballs do you get out of an average-sized cow? Ooh. Let's wait till after this play. <laughs> now, is, it, is that a uh, pulled herfer? Or is it a, um, a dairy cow, a Jersey cow? I don't know, but the animal lovers out there are hating the question, yeah. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> First down. Henny throws complete. Devon trying to get to the sideline. Did he get there? And got it to about the 47-yard line. You guys want to guess while we're going with the trivia question? Uh, I'm going to guess just a wild guess four. Yard line. Greece? I would say, uh, I don't know. Well, here goes Mike Hart. Throw one out there. I'm going to guess, uh, I take it back. Ten. I'm going to say eight. Eight, ten. Eight. I'll go with Mike Hart, number 20. Just pick 20 out there. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I love Mike Hart. I love that cow. Yeah, I like it. Flags are down. Henny on the scramble. Heads to the sideline. Penalty markers on the play. Pickup of about three, but again, flags on the field. All right, I want to know how you knew 20 footballs come out of a cow hide. Sometimes you just have to know little things. 91, defense, offside. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Spent a lot of time on a farm, my buddy's farm, when I was young. <laughs> Researching that. <laughs> Measuring a cow. <laughs> <laughs> so, things are tightening again. <laughs> That's what I think about that. Uh, it's good. <laughs> I think we got new pictures in there this week. <laughs> updated pictures, updated scoreboard. First and five for Michigan. From the sunshine into the shadows, Henny out to Hart. Nice spin move by Mike Hart. Now looks for a blocker down the sideline. Bumped out of bounds. First down, Michigan. Down inside the 20-yard line. That was a nifty little move, wasn't it, after the catch? This drive started up to the fumble. Henny looks over to the right side. Breston was over there, decided not to throw that way and come back. Puzlosny pushes him out of bounds. And now Michigan's in that red zone that they've had trouble with. Down at the 18-yard line. There's Mike Hart's numbers as a runner and a receiver today. Henny, look out. Tried to throw a screen. Oh, he almost threw that right into the Penn State defender. Anwar Phillips was coming on a blitz, and he almost threw it to Jim Shaw, the defensive tackle. Down to a minute six and the clock stop. One out of two today in the red zone for Michigan with a field goal. Yeah, and touchdowns is, are what you want. You don't want to settle for field goals, and that's what Michigan has had to do. Second and ten. Especially in their losses, in their three losses inside the 20, only two touchdowns in nine trips. Only 14 all year in 30 trips uh, in there, so they're struggling. Trying to change it here. Henny, plenty of time. Throws it out of bounds. Breston was open. I don't know that he uh, didn't want to go there or didn't see him or had already decided he was going to get rid of the football because it looked like Breston had about three steps on somebody down near the seven or eight yard line. There's Terry Malone, the offensive coordinator. We talked about uh, Michigan's struggles in the red zone. And there's what we were talking about. Only 14 touchdowns, eight field goals, 22 out of 30. Second worst in the Big Ten. And there's the picture as you look at it. That's your red zone, and they're in it at the 18-yard line with a third and 10 here in the late stages of the second quarter. And he's 0-4 on third down passing. And he would pressure again. Holly drops him. And the clock will continue to move as he's sacked. And that might take him in a difficult field goal position even. It's all the way back at the 27-yard line. Joe Pa wanted intentional grounding here, I think. Yep. That's what he wanted. Joe was a quarterback at Brown University. He would have never grounded a ball. No, though. he would He would never throw one. But probably. he had a nice motion forward. You see how he's, he's like a quarterback. Not bad. Forward. Yeah. Loss of nine on that sack. 
And now uh, Michigan's going to take a timeout here, I think. They're going to talk about it because uh, the field goal situation is much deeper, courtesy of that sack by Holly. And for Tom Holly, that is his sixth sack of the season. He leads the Big Ten or tied mm -hmm. for the Big Ten lead. Mm -hmm. He's really been playing well. 14 seconds remaining in the half. Joe letting the officials have it. <laughs> Joe. Our Pacific Life <laughs> game summary. <laughs> He's something else, isn't he? <laughs> Penn State defensively came up with a big play. Offered with a sack earlier in the ball game. Uh, Henny. The field goal. Not even close. Kevin Kelly missed a couple. Michael Robinson hadn't fumbled in two and a half games. Caught that one up. That's how Michigan got the ball. Harrison with recovery on the Harris hit. And Joe says, hey, you know what? There's only 14 seconds left. I'm not going to argue anymore. Reminds me of Coach Shula on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Nice guy, just mild-mannered as you want, just sweetheart off the field. But on the sideline, when he's working the officials. It's a whole different deal. Coach Shula reminded, wanted me to say hello to Joe last week or a couple weeks ago when we saw him. And, and there is one the big thing that Coach Shula was impressed with was that Joe would... Remember, he saw that when he ran from the middle of the, the uh, <laughs> coaching box all the way into the, the uh, referee tunnel runway, yeah. chasing the referee. <laughs> Shula said, I admired him for that. He said, I wish I could have done that. <laughs> Joe's still got pretty good wheels. Let's see how Garrett Rivas' wheel is here. He'll try a 43-yard attempt hit earlier from 35. Matt Gutierrez will hold, and this one's blocked. Somebody got a hand on it. There goes another scoring opportunity by the boards. And Penn State's going to have a few seconds left. I thought the ball was blocked. Was it just a bad kick? Let's take a look. I, I don't. I don't know. It could have been. It looked. It looked. Looked like it's just a bad kick. Yeah, you might yeah. be right. Yeah, he just didn't. Just didn't hit it. Wow. Yeah. Well, one, one made, one missed. And just a few seconds left here in the half. Penn State's going to have a safety valve man back. Michael Robinson's going to take a knee, and we're going to go to halftime in a low-scoring Big Ten battle here at Ann Arbor. So just one field goal. And that was Michigan. So they lead it at home. Three to nothing over the undefeated Nittany Lions of Penn State. Penn State unable to score in that first half of play. Let's go down to Swanee. Coach, I want to ask you about Antonio Bass taking a direct <laughs> snap. A little bit of a wrinkle. How'd that play come about? Well, we've uh, Antonio was a high school quarterback, and uh, he, he missed a lot of training camp, but we're trying to do a few things with him to try to get him the ball because he's a great athlete. We know in the tough ball game, good defenses, yards are going to be hard to get. How important has it been that your punt has been able to pin Penn State back and make them go the long distance? Well, uh, Ross Ryan's done a great job. We've done a great job coverage, but uh, we got to get something going offensively. Okay, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. I would say both coaches are going to be using that same tone. Both teams have to get something going offensively. Don't forget John Craig and Aaron and the Capital One Halftime Show is coming up right after this message and a word from our ABC station. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. And welcome to the Capital One Halftime Show. Joe Paterno, well, even in Ann Arbor, some people there still love Joe Palm. Why not? He's off to a tremendous start. The only unbeaten team in the Big Ten. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. His offense actually has been better than Michigan's in the first half, but he's had nothing to show for it. And you know what I'm surprised at? I'm sitting here watching and wanting to see how these young guys would do for Penn State and these young kids out there on offense, specifically offense, that how could they handle that crowd, that road environment? They're not flustered. And one thing that I really remind myself many times here in watching a game like this is the fact that if you're really good and you're really young, it doesn't matter. If you're really good, you're confident in yourself. Yeah, and part of that confidence is being able to get things done. And right now, I'm seeing a lot of defense on this field right now. Penn State's have an ability to move the ball, but they're not converting it. They had some miscues. They had a, a, a fumble, a turnover, excuse me, and they've just not been clicking on all cylinders. They need to go in at halftime, relax, settle down, regroup, and get those young guys who've not been in the stadium that big. It's a little unnerving being yeah, a young yeah. guy in but a they're big not, house. They're, but they're doing okay. I mean, right. they haven't really just lost their britches. You're talking about first-half adjustments that you take into the second half. 
Well, no team has been better at that than USC as they've trailed the last couple of games at halftime. And it looks like it might happen again, guys. 21 to 14. Zivikowski had a punt return for a touchdown. And they had an interception in the end zone as USC was going in. Nothing I've seen different this game. It's going to be all about the second half. Right now, Notre Dame not intimidated, but there's two and a half full quarters of play. Colorado and Texas. When you talk about Texas, you talk about one man, and that's him. Vince Young, 16 yards on this touchdown. You know, I asked Vincent this week down in Austin. I said, man, you look so much more confident when you're playing the game. And he says, I just feel like I'm out there doing it, having fun, and he has great support around him. Nobody knows whether to defend his pass or his legs, and his legs have hurt a lot of defense. You also talked to him about this, right? You put that out there like a loaf of bread? <laughs> yeah, today, <laughs> your teammates say to tuck that ball away, that loaf of bread, and he kind of grinned. And three touchdowns as they give it to him. 28 to 3 is the score there. All right, so 21 to 3, they were down to Arizona State, USC. So I guess you could say right now, the USC has Notre Dame right where they want. <laughs> well, this is, well, we know that this is where they've been successful is coming in and being mm. able to hold them down and then explode in the second half. But what I've seen Notre Dame do is because USC has so much team speed, at least offensively, the Irish have been running right at that USC defensive line. And they're eating the ball up. They're sitting on the ball, not giving the USC offense an opportunity to go out there. It's going to be what they do in the second half. I think maybe Charlie Weiss kept some things in his pocket, playing well, a little closer. He better have because this game is far from being over with. And I'll tell you this right now, this is a different game than Oregon at halftime. It's a different game than Arizona State. The Irish are playing. This is a real, I mean, they're in the game. There's nothing phony about this thing here. They are in this game. Second half adjustments. That's it. Well, he's just an Irish hater. No, and it's not that. It's just that USC will throw 35 on the board in the second half. They do it all the time. Let's move to the SEC now. LSU against Florida. Jamarcus Russell. Looking to the end zone, 43 yards on toss. Russell really is coming into his own as a quarterback. Not only is he coming in his own as a quarterback, but he's by far outplaying Chris Leaf today. Jamarcus Russell, like, I like the development of this young kid. Jamarcus Russell then, 27 yards to Dwayne Bow. <laughs> Again, he's having a great day. Chris Leaf banged up, having the shoulder with the cortisone shot, but right now, playing well. Louisville and West Virginia, big one in the Big East. Somebody pick Louisville to, win, to go to the national championship. Yeah, so that right? guy's probably not credible enough to talk about Michael Bush going in to score a touchdown here. West Virginia, a strong battle out there, and not much offense by West Virginia. Oregon State facing Cal. Cal coming off a disappointing loss to UCLA. Matt Moore, 58 yards to Anthony Brown. Cal defense having a little bit of problems stopping Oregon State today. They've got some real good, but they've been doing well in the red zone. Oregon State has missed some opportunities to scoring, so that Cal defense hanging in there when it counts. Cal running back Marshawn Lynch takes the ball and goes back to the quarterback, Joseph Ayu, who takes it in for the touchdown. And a little trickery there. Washington facing Oregon. Oregon ranked number 20. Kellen Clemens, 30 yards to Jason Williams. You know what? Kellen Clemens is a heck of a football player, and they've got this new offense going out there. Washington continues to struggle. Uh, but, you know, again, Cle uh, Kellen Clemens and Oregon are a good football team. Washington continues to struggle, but... They have shown some signs that there's going to be some improvement there over the next couple of years. Yeah. I think so. I like Isaiah Stanback, the quarterback they have out there. He's pretty good. I miss those signs. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see him. You're just a hater, aren't you? <laughs> this is the Capital One Halftime Show. <laughs> Capital One Halftime Show, brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Join us again next Saturday for another doubleheader here on ABC, beginning at noon. Some of you get Georgia Tech and Miami. Then at 3.30 Eastern Time, Texas, will they remain unbeaten as they take on unbeaten Texas Tech? And then at 4 o'clock Pacific Time, Utah against UNLV. Check local listings for the game available in your area. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. Time now for the No Huddle Highlights. And it was quite a wild day. Alabama and Ole Miss. Alabama's Kenneth Darby takes off 48 yards. Lots of miscues for Alabama today, but this was not one of them. They get it done at the very last with a great field goal to seal the win and stay undefeated. And here's that field goal you're talking about, Jamie Christensen, as time expires. 
Alabama goes to 6 0, first time since 96. Miami, Devin Hester returns this one, but here's the story. Kyle Wright threw 10 passes in the game, four for touchdowns. That'd be four. That'd be batting 400% in terms of touchdowns on passes. Hey, Miami's laying low in the weeds. This is a dangerous football team. Their big time chances are not over with. All right, Kansas State against Texas Tech. Texas Tech looking to remain unbeaten. Cody Hodges, how do you like these numbers? 44 of 65, 643 yards. Yeah, we talked about pregame about these guys being focused today. They were focused. The offense exploded throughout the game. Texas Tech is legit. Wake Forest and Boston College. Boston College is down. Matt Ryan comes in at quarterback because Quentin Porter was struggling. He finds Kevin Challenger. And two touchdown passes in minute 12. They come back and get the win. Michigan State, Ohio State. Troy Smith, 46 yards to Santonio Holmes. Yes, but this is about big plays by Santonio Holmes some missed tackles by Michigan State. And it's about Ohio State's defense. A.J. Hawk might be the best guy out there. School record, 12 sacks today. Wisconsin and Minnesota. This one was the wildest one. Coming down late, John Stocko drives some 22 yards to Brandon Williams. It's a 34-31 game. Minnesota now, 38 seconds left, guys. Just has to get the punt off. Come on, Golden Gophers. All you gotta do is punt the ball and you win. Erasing a great day by Maroney. Come on, Gophers. What's happening? Unbelievable as Wisconsin comes back to win that game, which, I mean, you gotta look at the Big Ten. Kind of that game is a microcosm of what this league is this year. And we've had a lot of, of games in the Big Ten where you've seen teams come out and late in the fourth quarter come back and win. Penn State and Michigan right now trying to battle and trying to, you better hang in there because you've got to play the whole game in the Big Ten this year. And the Big Ten, guys, we all know always comes down to the last part of the year, and that's because these Big Ten teams have that medal. There is no quitting these guys. It's going to be on until it's on. Seven teams with one loss at the end of the Big Ten. All right? That's how we started the day. None. None. That's been fit. This is the Capital One Halftime Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the studio. As we watch college football from week to week, we have to remind ourselves these are just college athletes. They're not going to be perfect from week to week. So if you want to look for perfection, look to the sideline. Here's Penn Holderness. They don't catch touchdowns or kick game-winning field goals, and our buddy Bevo's 40-yard dash time is less than impressive. Still, college mascots have woven themselves into the legends of this game, making us cheer, laugh, and sometimes scratch our heads. For example, Duke is a Methodist university, and their mascot is a blue devil, and a horned frog is, in fact, a species of lizard. 74 colleges call themselves the Eagles, but there's only one fighting banana slug at UC Santa Cruz. These lovable logs do work hard for the adoration. The Clemson Tiger once had to do 465 push-ups during a single game. But usually all the hard work pays off. LSU's Mike the Tiger lives in a $2.5 million home. And George's Ugga Six has his outfits custom-made each season to fit his dainty frame. However, not every mascot gets the royal treatment. For example, in 1920, Texas's original Bevo was the center of attention at a barbecue dinner. By that, I mean he was the dinner. Fortunately, times they haven't changed. This is Bevo the 14th, and I assure you, he's going nowhere near the spit. All right, Penn, thank you very much. Our second half is coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back in Ann Arbor, Big Ten matchup Michigan by a field goal over Penn State. Penn State comes in undefeated, trying to go to 7-0. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. We'll check in with Swanee in a minute. Partner, do you ever have one of those days where you and Kick and Zonka and Warfield are moving it up down the field and you can't get it in the end zone? Many days. <laughs> especially when you're going against a good defense and especially when you're on the road. Now, you, you plan and scheme all week and all week. What are you going to do? You're going to run this, run this, run that. And then when you get in the game the first half, it doesn't work. So you got to loosen up a little bit, maybe try some other things and see if those work. Well, we're going to see that maybe in the second half. Both teams are going to have to open it up. Well, and I, and I think for Penn State, I mean, you you got to you got to stay with Mike Robinson because he's the ticket that got you there. I mean, right. you, he's got to be the catalyst that gets things done. Let's check in with Lynn. Well, Bob and Brad, to that particular point, I asked Joe Paterno about the second half, and he said they're definitely not going to let Robinson get away. Every time he tries to move the ball on the ground, there's a spy. There's three or four guys just right on them. So he believes 
what he has to do is throw the football in the second half. The only way they're going to win this ball game or get the offense to be more productive is to put the ball in the air to the wide receivers and not rely so much on Robinson running the football. All right, we'll see Michigan have the football first as Joe's Nittany Lions will kick off. And Steve Bruston and Grant Mason back deep. Bruston's been a non-factor, but he can become a factor in a very quick hurry, number 15, as we saw him do against Minnesota last week. And that was their opening possession, or if you wanted to call it a possession of the third quarter against Minnesota, he went 95 yards. And they're going to kick it to him right here. He's got a chance to go 100. And he got through a crease across the 25, and he's dragged down at about the 28-yard line by Kilmer. Oh, he might have been off to the races. Our Pacific Life Game summary statistically in the first half Penn State quite a bit of offense and quite a bit of time of possession and nothing to show for it. Yeah, time of possession. They got that battle. They missed two field goals. And they fumbled once. And their one turnover in the ball game was uh, Penn State. Gary Rivas trying to warm up his legs. He's got the only score of the ball game so far. Michael Hart. Across the 35 to the 36. Calvin Lowry Ball made a stop defensively. Michigan, their first half right. possessions look like this. They punted the first three times, made a field goal, and then when they got the ball uh, on the oh, fumble on their last possession, went 10 seven, plays, down, 35 yards, three. and missed the field goal. So not a lot of offensive production in that drive. Chart. Second down and three. Back moves and he goes out and takes it. And Preston's got a first down. Offensive leaders for Michigan. You don't find much when you don't have much. Here's how they look. Kenny, eight out of 15. Mike Hart, 29 yards is all on the ground. And Jason Avant was Chad's favorite receiver again. Four catches for 38 yards. That last play was considered a rush for Preston because it was a lateral. So we'll give him four yards on the carry. But we know he still caught one. We know he caught one. That's a pass. Kenny on first down. Chad slips. There he goes. And down the middle. Almost intercepted by Calvin Lowry. Preston, the intended receiver. That was Tab going down the sideline. Take a look from behind. Top right of your screen is... Uh, Right there. Preston could have come back a little bit. Lowry had picked off a pass last week against Ohio State that really turned that ball game around. Did it ever. The second of his season and the seventh of his career. And that was really the game breaker in that one against Ohio State. Michigan from the 41. Blake clock winding down. Hart. He's down. And he takes some people with him. Not the biggest guy in the world, but he is strong. Across the 45, out to the 46. Was Lesney another tackle? The linebacker for Penn State, who coming into the game had 45 tackles in the last three games, including 22 against Northwestern a few weeks ago. That's being around the football. Yeah, he's third in the Big Ten in total tackles. The first junior captain since 1968. And Mike Reed and Steve Spear were captains. And Michael Robinson said, I voted for him for captain from the time he showed up. That's what I thought of him. Michael Hart into the secondary. Almost broke it. Zemitis saved a touchdown. And Mike's got his wheels turning a little bit. Pickup of 17. Michigan offensive line. Give him some credit. Let's go ahead and run this. Nobody's pulling. He just sees something to the right side. At Krause, the center, blocking on Puzlesny. And if you can get by Paul Puzlesny, you've done something. Yes, you have. 17-yard pickup. Grady comes in to give Hart a breather, and he'll get the carry. And Grady bangs his way into the secondary. Down to the 22-yard line. First down, Michigan. 14 more on the ground. That offensive line coming off the snap. Grady with fresh legs. Nice spot, Brad. Talking about second-half adjustments. 
Michigan gave credit to the fact that Penn State's defensive ends, Halley and Rice, were doing a great job on the edges and said they were going to attack them right up the middle. All these runs have come right over the nose guard. And another big pickup. Now Grady, he'll get stopped this time for no gain. Alford and Ali in on the stop. Listen to this one. We're in what, week seven? Michigan hasn't scored an offensive touchdown in the third quarter yeah. this year. Three points. They have a field goal and the kickoff return we saw last week. Right. No, no offensive game. second down. Three points in six games in the third quarter. And don't think that they're not aware of that. Yes. Second and ten. Hart back in there. Here they come. Here comes a blitz. Henny, nice play fake. Throw into the end zone of up. Too far in front of him. The minus was covering Jason LeBron incomplete. Michigan did a pretty nice job picking up the blitz. They did a nice job picking up the blitz, and the Midas did a good job on coverage. He was open, the bot was open a little bit, but that was a long way to throw the ball. Here you go, look at the top of your screen. You got a post corner. The problem is you don't have that much room to throw the ball yeah. to the sideline. That was about a 35-yard throw, and you had to wait till he came out of his move before you let it go. Third down and 10. And then he's going to call a timeout. Clock was winding down. They want to take advantage of this opportunity they'll have when we return. 11, 41 to go, third quarter. Uh, it's great to be a college student. Perfect day. The big house. Ann Arbor, Michigan, and hoping their Wolverines can score on this drive. Third down and 10. Again, Penn State shows blitz. Henny backs up. And drops to throw. Down the middle. Got his tight end. First and goal for the Wolverines. Tyler Ecker. Good throw that time, and finally they go back to their tight end. We haven't seen that in a while. Decker right here. He's just going to go down, break to the inside. Goes around the linebacker and throws it just inside the linebacker. Good play. 20-yard pickup. First and goal now inside the three. Maybe the Wolverines are going to get an offensive touchdown in the third quarter. First and goal. Mike Hart. Touchdown. two-yard Michigan touchdown. <laughs> Gutierrez to hold. Rivas for the point after. It's up and good. 10-0 Michigan. Just straight power. We've seen quite a bit of that on this drive. Penn State was one man short. You saw one of the Nittany Lions come running in late. I think it was Harrell. This is the best way to do it. Just go straight behind the uh, fullback. Short yardage, goal line stuff. And he took Harrell and Puzlesny in the second effort into the end zone. And I tell you what, there haven't been a lot of touchdowns around here. If you're ever in town, though, in Ann Arbor on a Thursday night, you head downtown, you go to the Cottage Inn down there if you want to get yourself a little food because every Thursday night, it's Glee Club time. really soon that was our entertainment for Thursday night they're entertained out here today by a touchdown ending a 70 yard drive Austin Scott takes the kick return and goes out to the 27 almost the 28 yard line our progressive drive summary 
70 yards, 10 plays, 3 minutes, 50 seconds to open up the third quarter in their first third quarter offensive touchdown of the year. Yeah the, yeah, the opening drive of the second half. So Michigan went in, talked about it, came back out and did something. Now let's see what Penn State's got. From the 28. complete to Williams and he's going to get swarmed under at the 35 by Prescott Burgess. Penn State in the first half had a couple of good looking drives that just couldn't score off them. Well they, they, they missed two field goals on their first and fourth possession. Then their last possession they fumbled but the other two or the uh, two times they had the ball for 12 and 13 plays yeah. came away with nothing. They still got nothing. They trail 10 to nothing. Second down and three. From their own 35, toss sweep. Derrick Williams hit in the backfield. Somehow squirted forward for a yard, almost two. Penn State offensively, always going to see number two up there in the headlights. As he had three receptions for 37 yards and also carried the ball several times. Tony Hunt, 38 on the ground. Michael Robinson, no touchdowns, no interceptions. 10 out of 14, pretty good, but he fumbled. First time they'd gone 12 quarters without a turnover. Yeah. Robinson hit his last seven passes to end the first half. This is where you might see him carry the football again. He's in the shotgun at a third and two. Big pile up there. Like a scrum going around in. <laughs> I think he got it, but we'll wait and see on the spot. How can you tell? Yeah, there we go. There you go. The referee, that's how I can tell. There you go. So Penn State comes out. Bob says, let's see what they got. They at least have a first down. Michael Robinson on a design run. Got about two and a half yards. First down for Penn State. And Nittany Lions undefeated, one of the few undefeated teams coming into the weekend. And now it's uh, a dangerous spot, 9.42 to go in the third quarter. Trailing Michigan, unranked Michigan, for only the second time in forever. They were unranked a couple of weeks ago, then got back in the rankings with a win over Michigan State. Robinson, nice play pick. Williams caught it twice. <laughs> Had to hold on right in front of Grant Mason, a fifth-year senior playing against a true freshman yeah, out there. I'm impressed with Grant, uh, Derek Williams. I mean, he just he doesn't play like a freshman. Nope. And uh, Grant Mason is, is a fifth-year senior. Started out his career at Stanford and after a couple of years transferred back and uh, has, has been one of the key players. In fact, he's led this team in tackles this year. Ty Willingham recruited him out there to Stanford. He said he missed his family and friends around here grew up in Pontiac, right by the Lions, Old Silverdale. Second down, Williams in motion, gets the handoff. End around. Harris with a great play defensively. Boy, we've seen some good linebacker play this year, and that guy had 18 tackles last week against Minnesota. He drops the fastest guy on the field for a four-yard loss. Jim Herman's got to be proud of his defense this time. They just string everything out. Bring it out to the sideline. Graham's out there. Harris is out there. All of the defensive linemen just, just keep going along the line of scrimmage. And that's speed, but speed was going sideways and not downfield. Now you see Jim looking on his defense digging in. Third down and nine. Robinson on the edge. Puts his head down, gets whacked at the 45, the 46-yard line. Mason and Harris again. Mason fired up. We just talked about it. He said, I was sick of the phone calls this week from so-called friends saying, you guys are no good. He said, we'll see what they say at the end of the day. Yeah. Hunting situation for Joe Paterno's team. Capano in the kick, and Breston waits on it back at the 10 yard line. Breston's going to have to call for another fair catch. They've done a nice job getting it way up there. Almost got interfered with down there by Ethan Kilmer, but no flags. And Michigan will work 
offensively inside its own 20-yard line. Well, big game coming up tonight in the ACC on ESPN. Florida State still very much in the national championship picture. They'll go to Scott Stadium to take on Virginia. College football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight at 745 Eastern Time. This is the 10th anniversary of Virginia's win over Florida State at Scott Stadium, and that was the first loss Florida State ever had. Can't believe that was 10 years ago. Boy. From the 17. Kenny, quick toss out to Breston again. Trying to keep his footing, and he lost a couple. And that's a rush as well. So, Steve, you know that rushing uh, four yards we gave you earlier, it's down to two because you just lost two. Michigan Stadium, packed house for Michigan and Penn State. 10-0 Wolverines at home. We'd like to welcome those of you that might have been watching the Colorado-Texas game. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. Eighth-ranked Nittany Lions two weeks ago unranked. Right now, still with a goose egg on the scoreboard. Michigan at home leading by 10. Michael Hart, who has the Michigan touchdown on the carry. And look at him battle, huh? He still goes. Michael Hart with about the hardest seven yards you'll ever see in your life. This kid is just a true sophomore, started last year as a true freshman. And he'll get in that huddle, and he'll be like a fifth-year senior talking to these guys, firing them up. Watch how many guys he carries. This Denovich. was a guy that had a bad hamstring three weeks ago. Denovich is right there to help him along. He'll fire you up. Chad Henney says there's something about his eyes in the huddle. Everybody pays attention when Mike says something. And he's 19. Henney to throw. Tough catch by Massacoy. Tim holding on. Didn't get the... Did get the first down. They got a good spot, I guess. I was going to say didn't get the first down, but he got it. The way the linesman has us look at it. Tim Massacoy, uh, Pennsylvania native out of Allentown. As a matter of fact, he and uh, Austin Scott, who's played quite a bit of tailback for Penn State today, were high school teammates. Yeah, we'll bring the sticks from the far side. Looks like a first down from here. And it very much is. First down on a tough, tough catch by the big tight end. Tim, a fifth-year senior. So that moves it out to the 20, just outside the 27-yard line. There's Austin Scott, his high school teammate. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys... Uh... A lot of the guys that ended up at Michigan grew up in Pennsylvania and vice versa. Here comes a blitz. Hart trying to run through it. And he's up over 70 yards on the day now. And he had kind of a slow first half, but, you know, he's one of those guys that sometimes gets better as the game goes on. Understand Maroney had over 200 yards again for Minnesota today, even though they lost. Yeah. We've seen a lot of good backs in the, in the Big Ten. There's Tim, there's Tim Shaw right there. He's going out. He's a linebacker for, for Penn State. He grew up in this area. In yep. fact, his mother worked in the concessions here in the big house. <laughs> and he said, well, after the game, long after the game, he had four brothers. They got to go down on the field and do some stuff that not many kids get to do. <laughs> That's nice. Play on the big house field. Second and six. Better hurry up on the big house field right now. Here comes Hart. Broke one tackle. Cuts outside. Made another man miss. And finally, Tom Bahali said, uh, you know what? I'm a lot bigger than you, Mike, and I got a hold of you. The tackle is right by Tom Bahali. Ali, the defensive end, number 91. Now, Holly has been outstanding uh, all year. He's a fourth-year senior, and they have nine seniors on this defense for Penn State. The only young guys are Puz Lusney and Connor, the two outstanding linebackers. Holly this week was one of the guys when somebody told him they were bowl eligible already with six wins. Holly said, we want Big Rosie, meaning the Rose Bowl. Some of them have talked about that this week. Right now, they're 10 down on the road in a regular season game they got to worry about. Henny on the scramble. Chad didn't get there. Going to be a yard and a half short. Let's, let's explain that the Big Ten champion this year is not going to the Rose Bowl because the BCS championship game 
is at the Rose Bowl. Unless, of course, they were ranked number one or two. What they were talking about was being going ranked undefeated and, 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 and being ranked one or two and going in that case. So fourth down here for Michigan. They have got their hands full against, as I said earlier, watch out for a wounded Wolverine. Michigan's pride hurt. Their season dented. Three and three, something they haven't been in 15 years. And right now, 10 up on an undefeated team. Except the punt. Ross Ryan's last one went 64 yards after the roll. He got a pretty nice one here, too. Probably will fair catch it at the 25-yard line. The battle of field position might sway a little bit for Penn State. They've got some nice room to work. We'll see how they do with it when we come back. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. City, credit card and financial tools to help you live richly. Subway, experience the new great taste of a fresh toasted chicken parmesan sub today. Subway, eat fresh. And Miller, there's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, a good call. The offensive call will be made here on the sideline for Penn State, and they'll trot out to the football at the 26-yard line. Deion Butler leads the group, the wide receiver, right there. Your worm's eye view to the near side. Robinson will flare it out. Tony Hunt trying to make a move on Burgess and can't. Prescott Burgess stays home. He's played very well today. You know, he's a guy that was part of the non-containment of Gary right. Russell's long run down the sideline yes. that set up the winning field goal Jim last Jim Herman week. said he had, a, he had a great game last week except for the one long run by Russell that really set up the play that, that got him beat. And today he's playing really he's well. All over the place. And, and the sure tackling, that's one of the things that, that is bringing down these Penn State players in, in space is sure tackling by Michigan. We saw Robinson hasn't missed in his last 10. Here's the give on the inside. Tony Hunt trying to break a tackle. And across the 30. Dave Harris makes another tackle. Dave Harris has 10 tackles. He had 18 last week. <laughs> wow. All over the place. Talk about linebackers that are all over the place. Number 45 and number 6 have been all over the place for Michigan today. Yeah. There they are, right next to each other. Good linebackers in this ballgame. All right. Big third down. Penn State's got to convert third downs just to stay on the field. Where is Derek Williams, you say? Slot to the top. Corner is going to blitz Mason. Now Robinson steps back in. He's still coming. Here they come, and he dropped the football. Scrambling, broke a tackle, throws on the run, going to be wide open. Corral Golden down the sideline, cuts back in to the 13-yard line. Unbelievable. Penalty marker down back at the 31-yard line, which is a line of scrimmage. Maybe the illegal man downfield that play took so long to develop and Robinson scrambling around. Let's see if they're bringing it back or not. None of the players are going back there. That's always a sign that the play is going to stand. Roughing the passer, 37 on the defense. That'll be tacked on half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Wow. Even though the quarterback is outside the pocket, he's still in college, he is still considered a passer, and he still is protected. Take a look. Bad snap. Robinson can't find it. Now he gets away from a couple of guys. Branch. Right there's the late hit. And this is the run. Terrell Golden, a career-long 56-yard play. And then you take it with the late hit that you're going to see at the end of this play, tacked on to the end, and it puts Penn State down at the seven-yard line. It wasn't much of a late hit, but it was, it was a late hit if you, if you want to protect the quarterbacks in it. First and goal, Penn State. Tony Hunt got leveled as soon as he touched it by Lamar Woodley. Well, this is Penn State's most golden opportunity to get back in the football game and get on the scoreboard. We're down in the final 45 seconds of the third quarter. They came out of out of ashes. It sure did. It looked like the third down play was going to go up in smoke, and Mike Robinson makes something out of nothing. Now they got an opportunity to get on the board. Second and goal at the seven. Robinson 
Edwards into the end zone. Broken up. Intended for Smolko. Jamar Adams was there, and so was Dave Harris. And the two safeties that have replaced the, the safeties from last week. Lloyd Carr said last week that Barringer and Engelman, the two safeties, were playing as good as any set of safeties that we've had here in 30 years, 20 years. He lost both of them in last week's game, and Adams and Harrison had to come in and play. Third down and goal at the seventh. With Michael Robinson run a quarterback draw here. Might be the final play of the third quarter. Robinson waiting to the end zone, threw it behind the man that got him here, Golden, who was open in the back of the end zone. Well, he threw it to an open spot. He didn't throw it to Golden because Golden had a man right in front of him. He threw it to an open spot where he knew it was going to be incomplete or completed to one of his guys. And now, another kicker that's had trouble today. We'll try to at least get three out of this drive for the Nittany Lions. Kevin Kelly will try 25 yard field goal. Field goal from the 15. Kelly, the freshman, right in the middle of the field. Gain of the hole, got it down, kick is up and good. So finally, the eighth ranked team in the country gets on the board. They wanted seven badly. They'll have to settle for three. And with just 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter, courtesy of this kick, Penn State back within a touchdown. Right, let's take a look at the Dodge defensive playbook. If you can, if you can get, get a pass rush with just the defensive line and not the linebackers, what a difference this makes. You can drop your linebackers back in coverage. Penn State gets a good rush, has to force the quarterback forward, and the two ends collapse. Very active, very athletic. Just a good pass rush with four guys. And a sack by Alford of Chad Henney. Joe Paterno's team finally on the board. The frown is because he's still seven down with 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Kelly, who just hit the field goal to kick. Steve Reston will camp under this one right at the goal line. Oh, wow. A couple of wicked hits before he ever got to the Taken 20. by Steve Reston. Tomorrow night on ESPN, the Texans take on the Seahawks, and then on Monday night football at 9 Eastern on ABC, Al Michaels and John Madden will have it for you. The Rams head into Indianapolis and take out the only undefeated team in the NFL, Peyton Manning and the 5-0 Colts. It's all coming up on Monday night football. I think uh, Eli's got better stats than Peyton does right now, doesn't he? Yeah, just play a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> give it some time. Yeah, just give it a little time. Chad Henney starting inside his own 20 again. Met by Tamba Holly. And that is going to do it for quarter number three. Penn State playing good defense and eat some offense in the fourth quarter. Or they will no longer be undefeated. Our presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC station. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Penn State away from Happy Valley. In the big house in Michigan, where Michigan hasn't lost back-to-back -back games in 15 years. And the Wolverines against Joe Paterno try to prevent him from win number 350. The heart of their team has the only touchdown. Mike Hart, two-yard touchdown run, and that's what they lead by 10-3 as we enter the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew in Ann Arbor. Fourth quarter begins. Michigan at its own 18-yard line. Chad Henney wants to throw a screen, and it's batted down by Matthew Rice. And that's the second one he's swatted away today. The defensive ends are taught well. You can't get there, get your hands up, and knock it down. Number 55 is Rice. Good vision. He's fighting a man, Riley, as big as he is, and have the presence of mind to still get your hands up and knock it down. Matt's an accomplished artist. He couldn't have painted that picture any better than the two he's knocked down. In fact, he was the artist on the scheduled poster for Penn State this year. That's a dandy. Third down and 10. Kenny, quick drop. Pass completes. Is it a first down? And I don't know about the spot. Well, that's a 
That's a crooked walk. That's and a now late there's flag, too. Justin King made the tackle on Jason Avant, who had been shut out this half until right there. Tackle by Chris Morrell. And I have no idea what no, the flag's about. The head linesman at, over there on the side threw it real late. We have a sideline warning. Charge to Penn State. First sideline warning. All right, we had one of those go against Michigan in the first half. Tom Bradley looks at him as if to say that's all we need is a penalty on the sideline. It's not to, not, not to mean that that penalty was on Bradley. No, not at all. Normally, it's too many players too close to the... To, to the field. And the first down by Avant, his first catch of the second half. Runs well, it in, was Tom. Runs into the coach, that's right. <laughs> it was Tom. Yeah. He was trying to help with the spot and got in the way, and that's why the warning was given over there. First down, Michigan. Hart. Got something out of nothing there. Got two or three. Morrell made the stop. Dan Connor. We're down under 14 and a half minutes. Swanee. Oh, Brad, you were talking about Rice being an artist. Here's a sample of the poster he did for Penn State for the schedule. Obviously, a, a very nice job. He's an industrial art major. Kind of a sensitive avocation for a football player. <laughs> That's for sure. He's got a very gentle brush stroke, I can tell. He's got paint all over his shoulder pads from hitting helmets today. Especially for a defensive guy. Man. Those guys used to search and destroy. Second and seven. Nice play fake by Henny. Had a man open down the middle and didn't find him. Looked like Preston was open, but Chad didn't Andy find him. And he's knocked down by Scott Paxson. Brought him down. They're trying to get the ball to Avant with a little stop and go down the sideline. Oh, boy, they're all Big Ten left tackle. Adam Stenovich is down. They've had problems with their, their offensive tackles. Jake Long, their right tackle in the uh, all Big Ten, has, has been out for most of the year. And then Kaloje was injured. Now Stenovich. Adam's been a heck of a player for him. And one of the catalysts of this offense. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, he looks like he may have gotten his ankle twisted yeah. up in there. That's what it looked like. That's what they're working on, left ankle. Big guy out of Marshfield, Wisconsin. Out there in uh, cornfield territory of Wisconsin. 321-pounder, looks corn-fed, doesn't he? He's a good player, and uh, they're going to have to help him off, and he's one of those kind of guys you have to drag off. This is his 34th career start today. That's more than anybody on the Michigan team. Yep. Got the start, but may not get the finish. Now, that Michigan is, is, is really in tough straits now because, as I mentioned, Riley, number uh, 72, has been playing right tackle. He's really a guard and a center, but since the injury to, to uh, Jeff, Jake Long, and then to Kaloje, he had to kick Ball out to the right side. Looks like Kaloje is going to kick out to the other side, then. Mike Kaloje is going to play left tackle in for on, on the other side. Yeah, there he is. So that's how they line up. They've been having trouble with that front group all year, keeping them healthy, and now they lose one of their leaders. Third down and nine. Henny waiting and waiting and throws high intended for Manningham. I don't think he would have gotten a first down had he made the catch because Pazlozny was right on his tail. So Michigan's got to give it up. Penn State will have another opportunity. They're a touchdown back with 13-14 remaining in the ballgame. Don't forget time permitting. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Craig and Aaron will have all the scores and highlights from the other games today. Did you hear what you just said? Puzlesny was covering Manning. Yes, I did. A linebacker covering one of the fastest guys on Michigan's team. Ryan to punt. Lowry's going to try to do something with this one. And he does a nice job. Gets what he can. Tip those out of bounds at the 37 38 yard line over there. About an 11 yard return. Tony Hunt 
Penn State offense will go to work in a moment when we come back. They trail right now 10-3 here in Ann Arbor. Back in Ann Arbor, tech for Michael Robinson show up. I, I, you know, I, I don't like defensive battles. You know? <laughs> I like score points, but this is time for Michael Robinson to make some plays. We said at the beginning, this is the time that he needs, because he's the guy. His wide receivers depend on him. His running backs depend on him. He needs to make some plays. They're going to stay undefeated. He's going to have to start to make some from the 37. Here's Tony Hunt. Oh, big opener off the right side. Tony Hunt made a man miss. Inside the 40, down the sideline. Hunt. Wade. Down to the two-yard line. Boy, when we were going to break and said Tony Hunt maybe has to do something, yeah. we forgot about Tony. That's what I said. Mike Robinson <laughs> needs to give the ball to Tony Hunt <laughs> and let him do something. 61 yards. How reminiscent of this is of the Gary Russell run by Minnesota last yeah. week. Yeah, so, so reminiscent. Good blocking by that Penn State front five, the offensive line, and then just make some guys miss. Michigan's been making all the tackles. This time they didn't do it. Tony over 100 yards with that 61-yard gallop. First and goal. He gets it again. Trying to bounce it outside. Michigan won't let him get there. Again, it's Prescott Burgess who made the first contact and got help from Woodley. Well, if, if, if you're going to throw, this is a good down to throw on because it's still a, a run, a run pass down. Maybe more of a run down than is a pass down. If you don't make it here, it turns into a pass down real quick. See if Michael Robinson's going to throw or if he's looking at that wristband going. Uh, I, I'm just looking for kicks. It's a quarterback draw, guys. Back at the four-yard line, second and goal. They still have. The extra hosses in there in the high backfield. Robinson trying to get to the corner to throw. It's inter almost intercepted by Chris Graham. He had it and off his hands. And now, as Bob said, they really got to pass him down. Lamar Woodley might have gotten a hand on that ball. Just good defense. He should have thrown it earlier, and he could have had it. There the ball is tipped. And Graham, it's right in Graham's hand, and he can't hold on to it. And he's got a big thumb cast as well. Chris does. That might have been part of the problem. Woodley tipped it. Graham almost had it. All right. And now third and goal. Now all the subs came in. All the wide receivers came in for Penn State, and all the nickel and dime backs came in. So this is a passing down. This may be where you want to do your quarterback draw. Third and goal, Penn State. They need a touchdown to tie. Robinson, there's your quarterback draw. There's your touchdown. An extra point away from a tie ball game. I called it one play too early. You, you know when to use no. it. Well, you're right. You, 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 that quarterback draw is in when you have the show pass, and then that's good. An all-important point after coming up by Kevin Kelly. Well, we said Michael Robinson had to make some plays, and he just made them. Yes, he did. Kelly's got to hit the kick to tie it up, and he's got it up and good. Tony Scott made a good one, too. I mean, Tony Hunt, excuse me. Lido Mitchell looking on. Part of the great backfield back in the day with Franco Harris for Penn State. Take another look at the touchdown. He sells it. He sells the pass. Let's the linebackers drop. And then he is a load. Third time he's run for a first down on third down. And of course, this one's an even more important down. It's a touchdown. Capping a 63-yard march. Tony Hunt was most of it. Michael Robinson was the last few yards. This is his, this is his sixth touchdown rushing on the year. Let's take a look at our IBM Star Watch. As it comes right at you, Michael, 14 out of 21, 169 yards, 50 yards rushing, and more importantly, the touchdown just moments ago. Penn State now with 10 unanswered points. They list him at 6'2 and 218 pounds. 
but everybody that we talked to at Michigan yesterday thinks that he looks like he's more like 230. Short kick taken by one of the up guys for Michigan. And it's Brian Thompson, the fullback. And Brian got it out across the 25-yard line. Our looks in today from atop Michigan Stadium. Our aerial shots today, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse. The Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion One, provides aerial coverage for sporting events across the country. They've been with us back-to-back -back weeks. Great pictures. We've had two gorgeous days to take those great pictures from up there. And the fellas, thanks for being along with us. When you look in on Michigan Stadium, yeah, Jerome's got a different look there. <laughs> That's not a bad view either, though. No. Chad Henney has only completed three of his last nine passes as he gets set to put it up on first down. And he'll run instead. And runs right into Zemitis. Zemitis stole the ball. Penn State touchdown. Like a lightning bolt out of nowhere, he stripped Henney of the ball and took it to the end zone. Could it be maybe a question of whether Henny was down before he took it away from him? But defensive players know that when quarterbacks run with the ball, quarterbacks aren't used to carrying the ball. So sometimes you can steal it from them. Take a look. Head on right there and then tuck the ball inside his own elbow as he's trying to make the tackle. Oh, boy, I don't know. See? That's close, isn't it? And he heads the other way for what would be a touchdown. And I think the extra point team is out there right now. They get this extra point up, and uh, there will be no review. Box snap. Now Kelly's going to try to run it in, and he got there. That's two the points. two craziest plays we've seen in weeks. And it nets Penn State not only a touchdown, but then a two-point conversion. a defensive back stealing the ball from a quarterback and running it in and then going for one it looks like it's going to be a disaster and your freshman kicker carries it in like a tailback well it's just stunned the crowd here oh, yeah. I mean, this is as noisy as this crowd's been all year here and they're in shock the mason has to go back to protect against the pass It is 18 to 10. It was 10 to nothing, it seems like, about 15 minutes ago. Well, just, just a couple of minutes ago, Penn State was down by seven. The long run by Hunt. They've scored 15 points in the last 17 seconds. That's what I'm talking about. And I'll give you one other little fact. The kicker got more contact, getting love from his teammate coming to the sideline. <laughs> I'm not sure how far he can kick this one off. <laughs> Gets set to kick, and now it's Michigan behind the eight ball. And I do mean an eight ball, 18 to 10. Kelly's kick. Yeah, Penn State is offside. Flag is down as Preston trying to cut it outside, but again, a penalty marker on the kicking team. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll make him kick this one off again to give Preston another opportunity. Another chance, yep. Offside, number six on the kicking team. That five-yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the run. First down, Michigan. So they'll just take the five-yard penalty and take the football, and they will spot it at where? The 33-yard line. Preston won't get another chance, but he might get a chance out there as a wide receiver before this one's over. Because now Michigan now has to play from behind and down not only a touchdown, but a two-point conversion. Still plenty of time on the clock. But the way it's been such a struggle for both these teams to get points today, you know, the sun could go down on Michigan for the third time at home if they can't come from behind now. They lose, they lose this game. 
would be the worst start in 38 years. They're go they are going to have to kick it. Yeah. Well, that's what we assumed the call was going to be, and then the uh, announcement was yeah. made that they tack it on at the end of the run, and now they... I think you have an option of taking it to where you where you get it, plus five yards, or re-kicking it. And with a guy like Preston back there, yeah. if I were Michigan, I'd want to kick it again. Well, the officials are just thinking, well, it's all safe and everything, they'll have, they'll have the ball, but they're not Steve Preston. Preston's like, let's do it again. Yeah. And if it's as short a kick as Kelly had last time, Breston might field this thing on the fly at about the 20. And if he gets ahead of steam and a little bit of a crease, watch out. We saw it last week. We got a much better kick this time, though. Go back pedal to the seven. Here he comes. Breston got the corner. Run down. But he got it across the 40 and out to the 44-yard line. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brad and the singular All-America Player of the Week update. How about Cody Hodges of Texas Tech? 643 yards through the air and five touchdown passes as well. Texas vote to 87654 now on your singular phone for your ballot and a chance to win a chance, a trip to the national championship. Texas Tech remains unbeaten. They'll face unbeaten Texas next week here on ABC. Brad, back to you. 643 yards passing. <laughs> Michigan picked up 12 yards on that re-kick. Michael Hart picking up 12 or so, maybe on his own. He got 10. Nice little weaving run. Alvin Lowry made the stop. Near the conclusion of our game today, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. The Penn State defense has done what they needed to do, and that is take the ball away, score a touchdown, and put and put them ahead. Now they've got on the road, stop Michigan from, from getting down and scoring. Hard again, right into the thick of things. Only about a yard. Scott Paxson was the first guy to meet him. Quarter, quarterbacks need to know how to put the ball away. I mean, we all quarterbacks want to get across, maybe get some extra yardage. The ball comes out just before he hits the ground, or close. It's very close, but it was not reviewed. And Zemitis takes it away and scores the, the leading touchdown. Second down and nine. completed. It's Steve Breston. In front of Anwar Phillips. And that's another Michigan first down. First catch for Breston. Remember, he caught a couple of those little swing tosses, but they were both laterals and considered rushes earlier. So that's the first time he's gotten positive yardage as a wide receiver. They move the sticks down inside the 35-yard line. Lloyd Carr's team trying to avoid back-to-back -back home losses for the first time in 15 years. 10-21 remaining in the fourth quarter. Grady this time stood up in the hole by Puzlesny. Carried by Kevin Grady, number three. And now it's getting a little chippy in there as they gave him forward progress down to about the 33-yard line. The crowd still, you can just tell. Yeah. They, they, they can't believe what they just seen. No. When, when the defense scores and they score quickly like that, and the game turns around, and then the next play is so strange also, and it goes against the home crowd. I mean, this may be the big house, but it's not a big help. <laughs> because because <laughs> the, the, the noise doesn't stay in the stadium. It goes straight up. Henny going deep. Man out there. Manningham, touchdown! That ball was thrown where Manningham was going, not where he was, and it was right on the fingertips. Touchdown, Michigan. Now the two-point conversion. 
is a true freshman, and he beat Justin King, the defensive back, who is a true freshman for Penn State. But you're right. He threw that ball before he even passed the defensive back. And now the two-point conversion attempts. They try to tie the ball game. Spotted down at the three-yard line. You got Mike Hart in there, who's a tough runner, but you've also got three wide receivers. Let's see what Michigan does here. Trying to tie the ball game up with nine and a half to play. Hart straight ahead. He's got it. Tie ball game. cookie Mike Hart 18-18 down he runs an out and an up on the on the first one he keeps his feet in he runs around King and catches up to the ball he's not when he throws that ball he's not even around the defensive back yet this is the way it had to be thrown though this was just Perfect execution. How pretty was that, huh? Even prettier if you're a Michigan fan. Manning hand the touchdown. Hart the two-point conversion. Penn State 18, Michigan 18. 9.32 remaining in the ballgame or in regulation. Williams watches the kick go over his head. And it'll be Penn State back on offense from their own 20-yard line. Well, what was kind of a yawner in the first half turned into a ball game. It was three to nothing. If some of you viewers weren't with us, it was three to nothing at halftime, and they saved all the excitement for the <laughs> second half. <laughs> Wherever you are, it's nice to have you along with us. Let's check in with Swan. Well, guys, an observation as we watch Robinson execute the play on first down, Joe Paterno was very concerned about how he used his freshman. As you see Derek Williams picking up that pass right there. He's very concerned about this freshman in terms of how they practice and how they execute in the game. The freshmen don't know how to pace themselves. He's been trying to give them time off. So the one thing he's told his assistant coaches is have them come into the ball game fresh. Now, in this ball game this afternoon, we haven't seen the freshman take charge of the ball game. It was a freshman who got beat for the touchdown this last play. It's been the veterans of Penn State who have done really all the work here in this ball game. So, Bob, when you talked about the freshman being the exciting value and the strength of the team and the weakness, we're seeing a little bit right now just in terms of the conditioning. Williams made that last catch, though, one of those freshmen, making it second down and one. Penalty markers all over the place. Looked like illegal procedure. Uh, maybe the left side of the line. False start. False start. 59 offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. There's Charles Rush, the left guard. So instead of a nice easy second down and a yard, goes back to second down and six. Well, Penn State doesn't have that problem very often. They are the seventh least penalized team in the nation so now you, you see why Joe was over there making the faces because he doesn't that doesn't happen very often second and six Robinson quick drop throws to Williams again and he trapped it incomplete so that's going to bring up a big big third down for Penn State in a tie football game that pass may have been deflected by one of the uh, defensive linemen kicks the ground. I wonder, does he, is he rolling up his uh, pant legs anymore? He used to do it all the time. There, oh, they're, there they're up. Yeah. Apparently he hadn't done it for a week or two, and the people at the press conference asked him about it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I would think a guy that's been wearing pants like that for about 60 years would know whether they were rolled up or not. Yeah. Third and six, Robinson. That's going to be pass interference. He's draped all over Deion Butler, Leon Hall. And that's going to be an automatic first down. 
Leon Hall defending. Leon looks like he's surprised. I don't know why he would be. Only the third penalty against Michigan. But this one's going to be big because it will be a first down for yeah. Penn State. You talked about, uh, we've talked about the freshman and Joe Paterno said, you know what, it's not that I didn't like playing young players before, but I couldn't ignore the talent of these four. I mean, uh, you know, you don't have to be a genius to figure out I got to use these guys. Well, you know, that, that's one thing that has turned this program around the last few years are the recruiting classes. Right. This year with, with, with getting King and Williams, last year with Connors and Morelli. Now, Morelli's not playing. He's the backup quarterback, but Connors sure is. And a bunch of other guys in those two classes are playing. As we mentioned, 22 freshmen and redshirt freshmen are playing on this team. First down, Penn State. It's on 34. Here's a counter to Tony Hunt, hit immediately by Prescott Burgess, the outside linebacker who's been in on a lot of stops. Allen Branch. Penn State has lost the last six to the Wolverines. As Bob said, they hadn't played since the 2002 season when it was an overtime win for Michigan in that one, 27 to 24. That kind of spoiled one of the games of Larry Johnson's 2,000-yard season. The longest win streaks you see against Joe Pop. Second down and 10. Robinson in the gun. Here comes a delayed blitz. He got hammered as he threw it. And I mean level by Dave Harris and Mike Slow getting up. Harris again has had a whale of a game for the second week in a row. Oof. Well, you mentioned Penn State, and you think Penn State, and what comes to mind is they've had losing seasons four of the last five years, but then in the next breath you say, well, they've got the third longest winning streak in the nation That's right. behind Texas and USC. They've won eight straight. Eight straight coming in. Can Michigan become number nine? Long way to go before we know that answer. Robinson pressured again in the pocket. Really giving some ground and he's in trouble. Knocked out of bounds by Lamar Woodley. He did everything he could to keep it alive. Only a three-man rush. Michigan should regain the field positioning on this kick. First sack, an eight-yard loss. A big, big play there. Capitos to kick. Preston again waits on the other end. Could be returnable for Steve. Preston from the 19th. Made one man miss, reverses his field. Trying to get a block, got the corner, and really shoved out of bounds over there at the 42-yard line. Good return. And good field position for Michigan. Tie game 18 apiece, and now it's in the hands of number seven, Chad Henney, and the Wolverine offense in gear when we come back. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy, the new Chevrolet, and American Revolution. Singular, raising the bar. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. And Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Who's going to succeed at Michigan Stadium in the next 7 minutes and 15 seconds, barring overtime? We're tied at 18. And... Michigan's got the ball back courtesy of a nice punt return by Breston at the 42-yard line. About it. Well, ball came out. Now they're going to say it was down. Michael Hart. Michael Hart, where we saw that last week, where we had an inadvertent whistle that prevented Hart from fumbling. Mike hasn't fumbled in the last 375 touches. His knee was down. I was watching the ball. The ball did come out. Meanwhile, they go right back on the inside. And it's going to bring up third down and a long 
and three. Michigan may have gotten up and ran a play very quickly. Just so they wouldn't have time to, to review that play. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Well, here's biggest third down of the ball game. We're down to 620. Two tight ends set in for Michigan. Avant comes out as the line out to the bottom of your screen. And that's Breston in motion. Penn State a blitz. Henny the quick slant. Avant's got it. First down. Single coverage out there with Zemitis, and Henny put it where only Avant could catch it. Pickup of seven. I'd like to welcome those of you that have been watching Colorado and Texas with Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan. I'm Brad Nestle. We've got a dandy going in the Big Ten. It was three to nothing at halftime. It is now 18 to 18 with six minutes exactly remaining in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Michigan driving at the 44-yard line of Penn State. Massacre on the move from his tight end spot. Henny back to throw, screen pass to Hart. Hart made Shaw miss, made another man miss, and got it inside the 40 to the 39. Pozlozny finally tracked him down, but it's a pickup of five. And Mike Hart, so many times today, has made something out of nothing. Exactly. My, my, my sentiments entirely. He had nothing there. And he just kind of moved around, picked up his feet, didn't get tackled, kept moving. Gained five yards out of something that should have lost a yard. As we approach five minutes, Michigan, remember, used one of its timeouts earlier. They still have plenty of time to work with. At the 39-yard line. It's Grady who just came in to get hard agree there, and Grady just pulls his way and runs Puzlesny over for a first down. Here's a look at the touchdown that tied the game. The out and up by Manningham, the freshman. And Henny put it right on his fingertips at the goal line. The thing that I'm impressed, Manningham never gave up on it. The ball was way out in front of it, but he had a lot of height on it, so he just kept running and finally caught up to it. Hart back in there. Mike's got 134 total yards, 94 on the ground, 40 as a receiver. First and 10. They fake it to him. Henny loads and fires deep out and way out. Incomplete. Bob, the two-point conversion the last yeah, time man. Michigan had it. Pretty impressive yeah, by Chad Henny. Exactly. Let's go back and take a look at it. I mean, this is you're trailing 18 to 16. And you probably now the quarterback comes up. To, you know, this guy takes a lot of guts and a lot of nerve to stand back, see what's over on the other side, and change the play. Say, coaches, I'm going to run this play because I think it's going to work. And it works to tie the ball game up. Now, I'm sure it was a check with me. We're going to we call two plays in the huddle. One's a pass and one's a run. But still, he has to make the decision to change the play. The maturing of the quarterback. Here he throws out complete Carl Tabb. And the Midas has got tabs on him at the 30-yard line. Only about a three-yard pickup. The Midas and the clock continues to move down to 420 remaining. Don't forget, time permitting, the thrifty car rental post-game report. John, uh, John Craig and Aaron will have all the scores and highlights for you. And there's been some highlights in this second half. Some strange plays, some big plays, <laughs> and we're dead even at 18. Kenny going deep again. This time for a bump. Justin King was covering it. He did a pretty good job with it. Remember, there's been a lot of missed field goals in this football game. The line of scrimmage right now is a 30. That'll be a 47, 48-yard kick. And the reason Justin King, the true freshman, is out there on the corner, and Michigan seems to be throwing at him a lot, is because when when they go to their nickel package, Zermitis, who plays that corner, comes inside to cover a slot receiver, and they put King on the outside. Garrett Rivas has had a roller coaster season, folks. Some big hits, some big misses. This one from 47 to try to give Michigan the lead. Kick on the way. He got it. Sometimes you get more than one 
chance in life or in a game. He got another chance, and he just knocked it home. 21-18, Michigan. Our Pacific Live game summary. In this quarter, there's been some fireworks. First, Chad Henney on the scramble has the ball stripped by Alan Zemitis, who took it 35 yards for a touchdown. Bobbled snap. Kevin Kelly, a freshman kicker, picks it up. Makes like Lenny Moore on the way to the end zone for the two-point conversion. Back comes Chad Henney. Deep ball. Manningham, the freshman, on his fingertips. And then Mike Hart on a two-point conversion try. Tied it up moments ago. Garrett Rivas matched his career long with a 47-yard field goal. And now it's Michigan by three with 3.45 to play. Derek Williams at the five. Trying to weave around and reverse his field. If he gets the corner look out, he won't get there, though. Nice job staying with him by the Michigan special teams as we check in on a Pac-10 update. Here's John Saunders. Oh, Brad, also a Taco Bell update. Joseph Ayubu. Cal goes 27 yards to Marcus O'Keefe, gets the ball down to the four, then he calls his own number. Ayub keeps it, goes in for the touchdown. They also went for the two-point conversion, did not get it. So Cal's lead right now is four. As you can see, plenty of time left in the fourth quarter of that game, 20 to 16. Notre Dame, meanwhile, has just kicked a field goal and taken a lead over USC, and they've just kicked off. USC will have the ball. All right now, back to you, Brad. All right, John, thanks. Uh, Derek Williams just got helped off after that kick return. And at the end of the play, Carl Tabb makes the tackle head on. I don't know if he lands on the football and gets the, the wind knocked out of him or if it's a shoulder or not. But it's the upper body. Hopefully he'll be back. Robinson. He's only hit one of his last six, and now he's in trouble again, but he runs out of the trouble. Burgess pushed him out of bounds as he crossed the 25 out near the 27-yard line. Penn State has three timeouts left. Michigan with two. That was Mike McQuarrie, a former Penn State quarterback, who just whispered into Michael Robinson's ear hole. There's Mike. Recruiting coordinator, good assistant coach. Yeah, he's done a nice job. Darkness coming over the stadium. Robinson drops the throw and fires. Got a man open. It's intercepted by Leon Hall. Hall going the other way. Inside the 20. Hall diving down inside the 15-yard line. Penalty markers on the field. But I think it's going to be a post-interception penalty. We'll wait and see. I think you're right, Brad. The uh, penalty came after the interception. The holding call on Michigan on the return. A 33-yard return by Hall. And that'll be brought back, at least some of it. It's tough when you're the only guy. When, when you're, the quarterback has to make the plays. The running game isn't that strong. The receivers, you've got to get the ball to the wide guys. Never saw Leon Hall. Hall came back from the short, picked it off, and he never saw it. Leon Hall, who this week, during the press conference on Tuesday, said he thought he felt some of the Michigan players were loafing a little bit on Gary Russell's long run by Minnesota last week that ended up in a loss for Michigan. And immediately, Lloyd Carr said, you know, sometimes you say dumb things when your emotions get away with you. He apologized to his teammates and apologized publicly. And he just made the play of the game right here so far. Mike Hart. Trying to bulldoze okay, his way in there for a couple. Tim Shaw made the tackle. Florida State tonight against Virginia on ESPN. College football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight, 745 Eastern time. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. Timeout taken 
by Penn State. And they have two remaining. Michigan has two remaining. Michigan trying to hang on now with a three-point lead. Joe Paterno talking to the headlinesman and says, how many we got? Two? Yep, we got two left. The Big Ten standings with Ohio State's win, with Wisconsin's win today. Penn State would be alone on top. Wisconsin yeah. within striking distance. Iowa a winner today. Ohio State had, what, 12 sacks did we hear? 12 sacks. State? A if Penn record. State should lose, everybody at the top would have one loss. It's conceivable that everybody in the conference could have two losses. That's what Michigan is playing for. It's been four times in the last 25 years the Big Ten champion has had two losses. And three of those four times, it's been a two and a three and a four-way tie. There's just no weeks off in this league. There are a lot of leagues are that way, but it's true in the Big Ten, too. Well, you know, Michigan State wasn't supposed to be any good this year. Wisconsin, they weren't supposed to be any good. They're, they're beating every Minnesota. Jason Avon in motion on a second down and eight, just over three minutes remaining. He's going to get the call out there in the flat. And while Phillips stayed with him and got help from his friends, he got about three yards on the play. And we're under, and we're right at the three minute mark as whistles blow. And Penn State's taking another timeout. Well, the biggest play of the game, and there have been some big ones, was moments ago. Michael Robinson trying to hook up with his wide receiver, and Leon Hall got in the way. Michigan in the lead with three to go. Great views today from Ann Arbor being provided by Outback Steakhouse Airship, the Bloomin' Onion One. Captain Tom's up there, Tom Whitten at the controls, high above Michigan Stadium. Joel Bakken, our photographer, brother. Joel, hold on, dude. Don't, don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> Great pictures, fellas. Thanks for being with us. Third down and five, Michigan. Michael Hart. Mike trying to weave his way to the first down, and Penn State's not going to let him get anywhere near it because Lusney in on another tackle. And along with Chris Harrell, has been a busy safety and a safety that's slow to get up right now. Timeout with 2.53 to go. Penn State out of timeouts and trying to battle back into the football game, trailing by three. What a day in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Perfect football day and a game that almost turned perfect in the second half. It was three to nothing at halftime. Michigan now leads it by three, and they're at least going to show that they're going to try. I bet this is a punt. A 50-yard field goal. Or a rebus. Yeah. Direct, this thing. direct snap punt. There it is. Good call, partner. Not a good punt, though. Not bad, but not great. He would have loved to have gotten well, a little more of the corner there. He's done He's done that a lot better in the past. Michigan has done that with their place kickers forever. He only gained 15 yards on that, dude. Yeah. Now, Penn State's got an opportunity, but they're out of timeouts. Are they out of miracles? It's hard to tell, but how about against Northwestern? It was fourth and 15. They needed a miracle. Robinson to Smoko for 20. And then Robinson with 30 seconds left going to Derrick Williams for the touchdown. And Penn State survived Northwestern on the road 34 to 29. Did they do it in Michigan? That was their only road game this year. All the other wins were at home. They're on the road again and behind with 245 to go. Penn State out of timeouts, but Michigan only ran 28 seconds off that clock. Now it's Michael Robinson's turn. Fires complete. Got it to Golden. Golden had a big play earlier in the ball game. Did he get out of bounds? Yes. Well, it's important to get out of bounds or to make a first down because then in college football, the clock stops until you move the chains. Got it out there. And Terrell Golden, who's only a sophomore, talk about all the freshmen, 6'3", 208 pounder, gets it out of bounds. With a first down. So he did his job both by getting the first down and getting out of bounds. Robinson going to run with it. He's trying to head to the sideline as fast as he can get there, too. And that's a long run to pick up no yards. Bob mentioned earlier, talk about USC and 
Texas. And the third longest win streak is this Penn State team dating well, back to last season. This one is in jeopardy. Yep. And so is this one. Yep. The other one looks pretty solid. <laughs> Texas, <laughs> Texas Tech has won too, so they've got nine in a row. Second and ten. Robinson getting some pressure, stands in, waits, goes deep middle, got his man. Norwood again. 28-yard pickup. And again, the, the clock will stop The momentarily. defender never saw the ball. That's the linebacker, Harris, never sees this ball. Norwood, the true freshman, one of the Fab Four, makes the play. This Michigan defense is the best pass defense in the Big Ten. At the 42-yard line of the Wolverines. Robinson fires out, complete again. Norwood, or rather Golden again, out of bounds. And it's right near the 35-yard line. Kevin Kelly is starting to think about warming up to try to tie the game. Another freshman. How many times have we said that today? His career long, like Rebos, 47 yards. His two-point conversion on a bobbled one-point attempt is what got us to 18-18. Michigan with their field goal moments ago with the lead. But now they're trying to cling to that lead. Robinson, quarterback keeper off the option, and he's in the clear down to the 20. Yep, they blitzed him. Michigan, Jim Herman, his coordinator, came after him. And he got by it. He scooted out of it, but there's a flag on the play. And it's holding. And it negates a 15-yard run by Michael Robinson. We said early on. Holding 77 offense. 10 yards spotted the foul. Still second now. The offensively for Penn State that Robinson had to make the play. And Michigan defensively had to force him into some, some mistakes, into some turnovers. They've gotten two. They're going to need another one, I think, to stop Penn State. We've ticked under two minutes. Robinson dropped the snap, picks it up, and one hops it intended for Butler. So the clock stopped with a minute 48 remaining. That holding penalty against Penn State was a killer. It sure was. Now they've got third down and long. And even if they get it down and don't get the first down, let's say they get to the 33-yard line, they're asking their freshman kicker to hit a 50-yarder to try to tie a game on the road. The other thing is Mike Robinson is a little bit winded. That long run he had took a lot out of him. He needs to get it back. Robinson under center on third and seven. Here comes the blitz. Going to get rid of it in a hurry. And it's caught. Butler held on to it, diving forward. I didn't know if he could grab it. He got eight yards on third and seven. Butler goes down, gets his hands under. Uh-oh, it hit the ground. First down right now, and there they blow the whistle. Yeah, they're going to review it, and I think that this is good. Previous play is under review. It is a, it's a critical time in the ball game. This is a critical first down or no first down. I don't think that's a catch. He had his hands under it, but his momentum kind of carried his arms apart, it appeared. Yeah. His left hand kind of separated from the ball. And I think he trapped it. Bob, Brad, I, I think if you get in this situation, you think it's questionable and it could go the, go the other way, you think you've picked up a first down if they count it as a catch. I think it behooves the offense to take advantage of its speed and spike the ball, not worry about the play. That's well, you're right. Point. They were at That's the line of point. scrimmage, though. I mean, they were up there as quickly as they can. And they were trying to call a play. Yeah. It, they should have just spiked it to second and ten. That would have been a good take idea. It out of the In retrospect, hands. that would be a heck of a good idea. And that's what I think you're going to see a lot more teams do if it's questionable and they think they might lose it in a critical situation, just spike the ball, especially if you have first down. Yeah. Remember, the replay in the Big Ten, a lot of people think was born because of Joe Paterno in a single season where he had about three situations where he thought the officiating was horrible, and uh, Bob mentioned him chasing the refs across the field in that one particular game. 
And uh, so here in its second season, the Big Ten started the replay. The rest of the college football, for the most part at least, has gone to it as well. And now in its sophomore season, the replay born in the Big Ten and being used in the Big Ten. And Brad, at the beginning of the ball game, I was talking to Joe. I talked about, was talking to him about the last Michigan game, and he brought up the fact that he felt it might have been a bad call that got that game in 2002 into overtime. They would have won it, except for the call, when then Michigan ended up winning that football game in overtime. Basically, when you see that replay, and here's a different angle, but it's almost the shine on the football that you see Following change things. We have indisputable video evidence. The pass is incomplete. Fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah. Well, I think they got it right, well, and that's they, all you're going to ask for. No question that they got it right. Again, Jim Keogh. And that was a critical point in this ball game. Jim Keogh is our technical uh, advisor that's uh, in the booth to our left. That went from a fourth, that went from a first and ten to a fourth and seven now. And they brought out Kevin Kelly, their kicker, and now he's going to trot back out there to the sideline, that is. And Michael Robinson of the offense comes back in. Well, we showed you a fourth and 15 uh, against Northwestern. You've got a fourth down at the 41 yard line. And it's going to be what? The 39 yard line. Fourth and about eight. They got the ball re spotted at the 39 yard line. Perfect on the season. Fourth and seven. Unbeaten record on the line. 141 left. Here's Penn State's day right here. Robinson. With time, running out of it, and running out of the pocket. Trying to get to the first down stick. He got there. What a weapon. Nine yards on fourth and seven for Michael Robinson. And that's, 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 that's why we said early on, this is the guy that has to make the plays. He stays in the pocket this time, and the protection is good. But the coverage is there. Look downfield, nobody is open. Tony Hunt got just enough of Dave Harris to give Michael Robinson the extra couple yards he needed. First down, Penn State at the Michigan 30. Blitz coming. Robinson fires in and out of the hands of Butler. Incomplete. Mike's got to be tired now. After that long run on fourth down, now he comes right back, and he has to stay in the pocket and throw the ball. He's recovering now. I mean, he, I mean they don't have any timeouts left. He just, he's just tired. He's a little winded. I'm tired watching it. 18 of 31, 224, and 59 yards on the ground. Defensively, Michigan's looking for a turnover. Second and 10 at the 30. Robinson down the middle. Smoko's got it. The tight end, it's first down at the 15. Smoko is the one that caught against Northwestern, the fourth and 18, down the middle. He doesn't catch many passes. Smoko only had five catches coming into the ball game. We just showed you that replay from that Northwestern game a few minutes ago, and now he's got another big one at the 15 of Michigan. Robinson fires in and out of the hands of Golden. And Morgan Trent was there to hit him. Clock stops with 109 left. Remember, Penn State already in field goal range. But now, you always, now you got to keep that in your back pocket, in the back of your mind. I don't want to take a sack, and I don't want to do anything stupid. I don't want to get out of field goal range. I want to keep that, and I want to take a couple more shots at getting closer or getting into the end zone. But don't make a stupid mistake and, and not have the field goal on fourth down. This is the 13th play of a drive that started way back at their own 19-yard line. Robinson has it batted down by Burgess. What a ball game number six has had. It is third down at 10. Now you've got one more play to try to get the first down, or maybe you run it in the middle and get it closer for number 23. A packed house at 
the big house. A 6-0 Penn State team on the road in Michigan. Talk about setting a Big Ten table right here. Third and ten for Michael Robinson. Fires. Incomplete. Flag down. It's going to be a first down for Penn State. Well, the slant was there, and Hall was covering. Pass interference, defense number 29. Watch out. A man who made an interception to give them a chance for a field goal in the lead now with a penalty. Just a hair too soon. Uh, it, it's a good, that's, that's exactly right. Just a hair too soon. Now Penn State first and goal without any timeouts. Tony Hunt and a tailback. Here they come on the edges. Robinson, quarterback, draw. Robinson, touchdown! How many plays can that man make? Fourth and nine, he gets it. First down, touchdown, he makes it. Wow. What a comeback by Penn State again. You know, nobody deserves to lose this one. Nope. Three-yard touchdown for Michael Robinson. Point after is a very big one to give them a four-point lead. And it's up and good. Well, now Michigan knows what it needs. We know one thing. This one won't go to overtime the way it's sitting right now. Oh. Penn State. Maybe it's their destiny. Who knows? They've had miracles two or three times this year. And here's one more prayer answer. And look who's here to stop him. Burgess, number six, misses the tackle. Just too strong. And the fans that had State College and Beaver Stadium packed last week, a lot of them tried to get in here today. And when Robinson goes in, there's what you get. They got the white shirts on. Some of them. From last week. The guys that really matter with the white shirts are right there. 25-21. And now can Steve Breston pull a miracle out of the air? The center. Coming over to congratulate him. Greece, we've had three lead changes in this quarter. Yeah. <laughs> it was three to nothing at halftime. 25 <laughs> 21. Let's see if Kelly will kick short or chance one to Breston. He's going to kick it. And Steve's going to camp on it at the six. And Breston do some magic. Down the sideline, broke a tackle. Steve Breston, he's got two to beat. Preston across the 40, all the way out to the 46-yard line. They kicked to him all day long, whether it was kickoffs or punts. They had said, we're kicking to Preston, and we're going to play. Michigan's got two timeouts left, and they're at their own 47-yard line, courtesy of this 41-yard return by Preston, and he almost broke it. Zemitis just stayed home and got enough of an angle right there to bring him down. This one's not over yet. Michigan at its own 47. Avant in motion. Kenny deep out. Got Avant at the 36-yard line. First down, Michigan. A pickup of 17. You know, in, in times like these, the defense seems to play a little looser and a little softer and allows the underneath stuff. Well, that, that, that was his foot came down on the line. His heel came down on the line, I should say. There's the toe and the heel land second. It looked like toe heel. Kenny fires deep out on that side and it's caught by Carl Tab. 
And he didn't get out of bounds. Pick up a four. The official on the sideline said the clock should keep going. But they take one of their two remaining timeouts. 25 to 21, Michigan driving with 28 seconds left. Coming up tonight on ABC, we got some drama here, but we got three of TV's best dramas are back to back to back. At 8, 7 Central, chance to see Lost on Saturday night, followed by a new hit, Invasion, then Commander-in-Chief starring Gina Davis. So don't go anywhere, settle in tonight with ABC starting with Lost at 8, 7 Central. Well, what a game here with 28 seconds remaining in Ann Arbor. Look at the scoring in the fourth quarter. upset with the official about whether or not his receiver was out of bounds. Yeah. Or he's saying yeah. that the we, timeout should have been called a lot quicker. Yeah, and, and, and a coach can call timeout. All he has to do is get the side judge on his side to, to, to uh, get his attention to stop the clock. I think Puzlozny's nose tells the story of this football game. Did you see that a minute ago? Paul, turn around. We got we got a pretty good gash going there in the bridge of the nose. And he looks like a, either a fullback or a linebacker. And he's he? a linebacker. Yeah. And he's a good one. Everybody's still having reason to cheer. And now, seeing whether or not there will actually be any time put back on the clock, as Lloyd is patiently listening at this point. Don't know how long the patience will take, but. At this point, Michigan has one time out left. Right. Right now, the line of scrimmage is a 32-yard line. It's going to be second down and six upcoming. And a field goal does Michigan no good, obviously. They need a touchdown. the game clock to 30 seconds based on the time the timeout was requested by the coach. Well, Lloyd won that one. It's only a couple seconds, well, but that's a whole you, play. You don't know if he won. He may have been asking for eight or ten seconds. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and they gave him two. He got partial victory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a half minute on the clock when they officially reset it, and it is reset right now. Now, second down and six. Three wide out grouping for Chad Henney. And now Ecker, the tight end, swaps side. Oh, Preston. Here comes Avant towards the ball. Henney, the out and complete to Ecker. The tight end who'd moved from the right to the, the left to the right side and then went out there, caught the ball, pick up a five, and got out of bounds. So the third down doesn't matter as much as the yard remaining. We know that Michigan's going to pull every stop they have, and they have only one timeout left. Manningham, who had the touchdown earlier, is up to the top of your screen. Avant down here to the right, but it's Mike Hart. Mike Hart, first down, stiff arm, still on his feet. Hart inside the 20, down to about the 17-yard line. He just never quits. Yeah, you got to watch the time. You got 18 seconds. Uh, every minute, every every uh, yard that he was fighting for is taking up time off the clock. You need a touchdown. But now they're down to the 16-yard line. And all season long, and all week long, all everybody has talked about in Michigan is red zone, red zone, red zone. Can Michigan put one in in the red zone to come from behind and win the game? The second last in the Big Ten inside the 20. And a deep drop. Fires out in the flat. Breston, and he's planted out of bounds. Incomplete. Pass is incomplete. It is incomplete. So that one took a few seconds, too. It took six seconds. You got to start Boy, throwing. Boy, you got to go to the end zone, You got to start throwing to the end zone. You're maybe only going to get. You'll get two, but you may not get three. 
you know, maybe a slant or a skinny post. If you don't get in, you still got the timeout. Avant and Breston both to Henny's right. Henny looks to the left. He goes back the other way to Manningham, and he got it complete. And he's out of bounds at the 10-yard line, but there's only six Manningham. seconds left. So it all comes down to right here. I mean, these routes, they are, there are receivers going into the end zone, but he's coming off of those routes and cut throwing to the short guys like you would do in a normal situation. But these aren't normal times. You've got to throw the ball into the end zone and give your guy a chance to make the play. If you don't cut it loose here, you'll never get another chance. You won't get another chance. Here's the ball game for Michigan. Can Penn State remain unbeaten? Six ticks left. Henny, pump fakes, goes incomplete. There's still one second left. Breston, the intended receiver. One tick and one play and one timeout. Timeout. And, they're and gonna, they'll take it. They're going to talk about their best play. Wow. <laughs> Fourth down coming up with a second and one play left. And today, Chevrolet players of the game. Two touchdown runs over 300 yards in total offense. Prescott Burgess, who is all over the field defensively for Michigan. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund on behalf of those two young fellas. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, both teams, on a great game. But it's not over yet. There's one play left. Barring a defensive penalty, there's one play left. There's one second left. And whatever your best play is, as Bob said, you better have it right here. Well, Henny does not run. So you don't have to worry about the quarterback like Michael Robinson. But, but I still think if you get him outside the pocket, that gives you more time. And it, it also would surprise the defensive backs if they didn't see the quarterback. They think he's in the pocket and he's outside the pocket. The angles to throw into the end zone are a lot different. His favorite target, Jason Avant, trots out to the left side. The other two wide receivers, including Breston in the slot to the near side. Final play at Michigan Stadium. Fourth down, one second left. Michigan trailing by four. Henny fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Manningham! Michigan wins! Catches his second touchdown of the evening. The Big Ten standings have been shaken in the final second in Michigan. The team's being met by the band down in the corner. The crowd is going wild. Wow. I said to Chan Henney yesterday, what was harder this week, going to practice or going back to class. He said, you know what? Some of my classmates looked at me a little bit different yeah. on Monday. Yeah. I bet they don't look different <laughs> this Monday. Here's how the standings look. <laughs> Penn State and Wisconsin up there at 6-1, and one, and Michigan avoids losing back-to-back -back games at home for the first time in 15 years. Lloyd Carr is with Lynn Swan. Coach Carr, unbelievable would describe it. 
a game hard fought. Character, brilliant play. Well, I think on both sides of the field, Lynn, uh, Penn State is a tremendous football team and uh, great character kids, and so do we. Your kids came back fighting hard. You never gave up. People questioned whether or not they'd have the confidence coming out of that tunnel at the beginning of the ball game. At the end of the ball game, they gave you everything they had. Well, they gave us everything they had for 60 minutes, and uh, this is a special memory. But uh, we got to go uh, win two in a row or try to. <laughs> Coach, Manningham came up with some huge plays. They talked about the freshman at Penn State. He did a fabulous job for you this afternoon. Well, he's, he's having a great year, but I think Chad Henney there hit some big plays. But I give all the credit to our offensive line because we're banged up and battered, and uh, I thought they did a great job protecting Chad. So uh, enjoy this one. I know, Coach, you talked to your kids about tradition. You talked to them about character. You talked to them about what Michigan Wolverine football is all about. This has got to be one memory that will last a lifetime. Well, I think it will. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank a great you. win. Thanks. Win number 99 for Lloyd Carr might be one he remembers more than any other for a long, long time. What a game. 27-25, Michigan on the final play of the game wins it, and Penn State suffers its first loss of the season. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Ann Arbor. Final score, Michigan 27, Penn State 25. Let's join John, Craig, and Aaron in New York. Guys, it's all yours. Woo! It's all ours. We don't want it. There's a, a second left. You know, if this doesn't tell you what the Big Ten is all about this year, then nothing does. Joe Paterno does a great job. His team comes all the way back down. Looks like they're going to win in one second left. It's all blown up. And how about the guy who brings Michigan back oh. to get it done? Chad Henney. We talked yep. about it. We said, hey, the guy is not making plays. He hasn't been the man this year like he was last season. He goes down the field, and that one second, you're talking about clock management, giving yourself one more shot at the end zone. Everything matters. How about the call about Lloyd Carr going to the referee and getting those two extra seconds? Yes. You remember that last play was called with one second. Had they not got those two seconds on the clock, they may not have had a chance to get that play. Great management. Great clock management and a great victory, of course, as Lloyd Carr said. They need to find a way to win two in a row because that just takes them to four and three on the season. Six and one for Penn State. We'll continue with more after this message and a word from our ABC stations.